Section 1 and Yaakov 12 Rabbi Shia opens a discussion about the most significant choice that each of us must make whether to follow the evil inclination a force present and persuasive from the moment of human conception or the good inclination which does not express itself until a person is 13 years of age a righteous individual we learn is one who does not put credence in the evil inclination but rather waits for the arrival of the good while those who follow the evil inclination shall certainly suffer in the world to come the righteous are made to suffer trials and afflictions in this world precisely because they do not associate with the other side whose realm this is yet God will deliver the righteous from all ills as he did for Yaakov God protects the righteous from severe judgment by removing them from the world at the time of judgment or by postponing judgment the relevance of this passage living in a dimension of time and space we Invariably fall under the delusion that our negative behavior bears fruit while positive deeds go unrewarded. This illusion is fueled by our concept of time, which delays both judgment and reward. Our concepts of space and separation redirect to judgments and light to different areas of our lives. Thus, we might behave unethically in business and reap financial reward. Judgment might then be directed towards our health, but we may fail to see a connection, believing instead that life is chaotic and random. Likewise, we might conduct our business affairs justly and honorably, yet profits fail to rise. However, we fail to notice that our children, who represent true fulfillment, have suddenly drawn closer to us, or previous negative behavior may have destined us for chaos involving an auto accident. God forbid, but the light generated from a sharing action performed many years earlier averts catastrophe without any awareness on our part of what might have been. All this is intended to allow us to. Exercise free will and to play an active role in our own fulfillment. This passage illuminates the forces of cause and effect so that we may live with them in harmony. We gain time protection time to change our ways before the severe judgments of us are executed. One and Yaakov dwelt in the land in which his father sojourned in the land of CNA and Bershi 311. Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse. Many are the afflictions of the righteous and Hashem delivers him out of them all. Tehillim 3421. Come and behold how many enemies a man must face from the day that the Holy One blessed be he gives him a soul in this world. As soon as man comes into the world, the evil inclination is immediately ready to join him as it is written. Sin crouches at the door. Bershi 47. Because that is when evil associates with him to come and behold this is true from the day of birth. Beasts protect themselves by fleeing from fire and evil places when he is born. Man immediately flings himself. Into the fire because the evil inclination dwells within him and immediately prompts him to follow the path of evil. 3 For we have learned that it says better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who knows not how to take care of himself. Kahila 413 Better is a child because a child represents the good inclination it has been with man for only a short time since the age of 13 years and onward. It is with man as we have already learned for in the verse that an old and foolish king. Kahila 413 King refers to the evil inclination which is called the king and ruler of people in the world. It is certainly old and foolish because as soon as man is born and comes into the world it lives with him. Hence it is an old and foolish king. 5 Further it reads who knows not how to take care of himself. It is not written to take care of others but to take care of himself. Why? Because it is foolish about it. Solomon said and the fool walks in darkness. Kahila 214 because it comes from the refuse of darkness and will never have light but he who does not know how to take care of others is not yet considered foolish. 6 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold it is written better is a poor and wise child and he asked who is a poor child and he replies it has been explained and we learned he is a good inclination but better is a child as it is written I have been young and now I'm old. Tehillim 3725 this is a lad who is a poor child and owns nothing why is he called a lad because he is constantly renewed like the moon he is also a wise child because wisdom dwells within him. 7 that an old king refers to the evil inclination which stands in contrast to Monotron and is called a scoundrel as we have learned it never departed from its impure ways from the day it was created it is foolish as all its ways lead to evil it deludes people and does not know how to take care of itself it accuses people falsely and misleads them from the path of good to the path of wickedness. Eight, come and behold, this is why the evil inclination comes to join with man as soon as possible from the day he is born, so that man will believe in it later. When the good inclination arrives, man will find it difficult to believe in it, and its words will seem burdensome. Similarly, we have learned that he who is a subtle evil monger hastens to plead his case in front of a judge before the arrival of his colleague, the litigant, as written. The one who pleads first seems to be in the right. Mishlei 1817 9. The serpent was crafty, or Bershi 32. He too hurries to dwell in man before his colleague. The good inclination comes to dwell in him, and because he arrived early to plead his case, when his colleague who is the good inclination comes later, it is difficult for man to unite with it, and he cannot raise his head as if he carried on his shoulders the burdens of the world. All this is because the evil one came first of the Solomon said the Poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Kahila 916 because the other one arrived earlier 10 subsequently for any judge who accepts the words of a litigant before his colleague arrives it is as if he accepts another deity to believe in otherwise his neighbor comes forward and sifts his case Mishlei 1817 which means only after his colleague comes should he hear his words this is the way of a righteous man because a righteous man does not believe the subtle evil monger who is the evil inclination even if he hastens to plead his case before the arrival of his colleague the good inclination so it fulfills the verse and his neighbor comes forward and sifts his case and with this act people fail to merit the world to come 11 but the righteous man who fears his master suffers many afflictions in this world in order not to believe in and join the evil inclination and the holy one blessed be he saves him from them all as it is written many are the Afflictions of the righteous and Hashem delivers him out of them all. Tehillim 3420 Note that it is literally written many afflictions to the righteous and not but many are the afflictions of the righteous. This signifies that whoever suffers many afflictions is righteous because the Holy One blessed be he cares for him because the afflictions he suffers alienate him from the evil inclination for this reason the Holy One blessed be he cares for this man and delivers him from all in this world and the world to come happy is his lot. Twelve come and behold how many afflictions befell Yaakov to keep him from becoming infected by the evil inclination and to keep distant from his lot that is why he suffered punishments and afflictions and had no quiet repose he said I had no repose nor had I rest nor was I quiet yet trouble came. Eo 326 come and behold how many afflictions do the righteous suffer in this world trouble after trouble pain after pain so that they can merit the World to come 13 How many afflictions did Yaakov have to suffer as it is written I had no repose in Laban's house and I could not escape from him nor had I rest because of that suffering that Esau's minister inflicted on me and after that there was a fear of Esau himself nor was I quiet on account of Dinah and Shem 14 yet trouble came it was the trouble and confusion about Yosef which was the hardest affliction of all why because Yaakov loved Yosef who is the secret of the covenant through which Yaakov entered Egypt that is why Yaakov loved him so much after this it is written I remembered my covenant Bereshit 915 the whole redemption was for his sake because the Shechinah was there with him with the covenant who is Yosef thus the confusion about Yosef was harder on him than all other afflictions that befell him 15 and Yaakov dwelt in the land in which his father had sojourned in the land of CNA and Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse. The righteous perishes and no man lays it to heart and merciful men are taken away none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Yeshayah 571 The righteous perishes when the Holy One blessed be he looks on the world and it is not as it should be and judgment falls on the world and the righteous among them is taken away so that the judgment will fall only on the others who will have no protection. 16 As long as the righteous dwells in this world judgment cannot be handed down on it. What is the origin of this principle from Moshe as it is written he said that he would destroy them had not Moshe his chosen one stood before him in the breach. Tehillim 10623 Thus the Holy One blessed be he takes the righteous from among them and elevates them from this world only then does he receive his due retribution from the others as the last part of the passage reads the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. This means that before evil comes to rule it. World the righteous is taken away. Another explanation is that from the evil refers to the evil inclination which corrupted and misled the world. 17 Come and behold, Yaakov
dwelt in a land in which his father sojourned. Beersheet 371 He asks what is meant by his father sojourned had Medurai and he replied terror had major from every side because he was anxious and afraid all his days. Rabbi Lazar said and Yaakov dwelt in this place that was unified in darkness. The land in which his father sojourned means precisely this panic and fear of his father Itzhak who is the left column in the land of CNA and alludes to a place connected to its proper location. Which means that the Nukba is called land when she is connected to the left column who was the father of Yahikov. She is called the land of CNA and as it was said a place attached to its proper location which means that the land of CNA and I is connected to the land of his father sojourning which is the left column. His father sojourned is harsh judgment as it is the secret of the left column of CEIR and the land in which his father sojourned is a land of weak judgment as we have learned. This is land that is joined with and emerges from harsh judgment which is the left column Yaakov dwelt in and held onto this land section 2. These are the generations of Yaakov. Here follows a discussion of the significance of Yosef as the first named in the list of the generations of Yaakov. Also Rabbi Abba comments on the importance of the number 17 in relation to Yaakov and Yosef. The relevance of this passage Yosef corresponds to the sphere of Yezid. The portal and gateway through which all the light of the upper world flows into our world. The patriarchs Avraham, Itzhak and Yaakov denote the supernal realm whereas Yosef signifies the funnel through which the sacred light emerges into physical reality. Here we connect ourselves to this cosmic funnel where we receive the divine and effulgent light that shines in the upper worlds. The number 17 is the numerical value of the Hebrew word for good tov, thus forces of goodness are amassed and drawn into our lives through the mystical powers attached to the number 17 as expounded upon in this passage 21. These are the generations of Yaakov Yosef, Beersheet 372 after Yosef settled in Yaakov and the sun which is CEIR and been mated with the moon which is the Nukba he began to produce generations and who is he that brings forth offspring. The scripture continues saying Yosef for the river that flows and comes out of Eden is the Yezid that is designated Yosef. It is he who is the progenitor of the offspring because his waters never cease to flow. 22 The sun who is CEIR and been unites with the moon the feminine principle but can only bear fruit on the grade that is called righteous and on no other grade namely Yezid. Thus it is Yosef who is the grade of Yaakov who can bear fruit and bring forth generations to the world. Thus it is written these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef. 23 These are the generations of Yaakov Yosef. Another Interpretation is that anyone who gazed at the facial image of Yosef thought it was the facial image of Yaakov come and behold it is not written this way when referring to any other children of Yaakov for example it is not written these are the generations of Yaakov Reuben or Shimon etc only in reference to Yosef I as it written these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef the reason is that the facial image of Yosef was the same as his father's image 24 Yosef being 17 years old Beersheet 372 Rabbi Abba said that the Holy One blessed be he indicated to Yaakov that Yosef was 17 years old at the time he was lost all the days that remained after he reached 17 years of age during which time he did not see Yosef Yaakov was crying over him because he was crying during those years the Holy One blessed be he gave him another 17 years during which he lived in the land of Egypt with happiness honor and fulfillment his son Yosef was king and all his Sons were there before him though 17 years were considered as life for him hence the text informs us that Yosef was 17 years of age when he lost him. Section 3 For the work of a man shall he pay back to him. Rabbi Shia addresses the problem of why some righteous individuals enjoy prosperity, good health and happiness while others endure terrible suffering. The mystery revealed to explain this emphasizes the crucial role of Mazel, live fortune, luck, whether sinful or righteous all individuals shall suffer who receive their souls from the Nukba moon during the period when she is defective. God compensates those righteous who suffer in this world by ensuring their merit in the world to come. Their suffering in this world is the result of their soul's misfortune. While we may endeavor to reason why there is such disparity in the fortunes of men, Kabbalah explains that a righteous soul actually chooses the moment of birth and the physical body into which it will incarnate the righteous will often purposely choose a life of suffering in order to help correct the sins of the generation thus preventing great judgment and destruction this section underscores the importance of the strength of the soul of the righteous God's judgment rests on this strength and not on physical or material qualities the relevance of this passage the physical body is of the same shape and structure in all human beings however the internal vessel a man's desire to receive is of different measure in each person for example a person endowed with a large vessel may have the power to accumulate enormous wealth yet on a purely physical level there is no distinguishing trait that hints at a wealthy man's financial capabilities and business acumen in similar fashion the soul of a single righteous individual may be far greater than millions of sinful people of the same generation the suffering endured by this lone righteous individual can therefore balance all the negativity generated by the actions of others through the merit light of the righteous souls whose light shines so radiantly through this passage we can help correct the effects of our own negative actions moreover our own vessel is expanded so that our efforts toward righteousness compensate for the sins of others 25 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse therefore listen to me you men of understanding far be it from hell to do wickedness and from shade to commit iniquity for the work of a man shall he pay back to him and according to his ways will he cause to befall every man of 3410 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he created the world he created it by judgment and it exists upon judgment all worldly affairs exist according to the principles of judgment nevertheless to support the world and prevent its destruction the holy one blessed be he spreads mercy over it this mercy tempers judgment so that it does not put an end to the world thus the world Acts according to mercy and endures due to it. 26 And if you say that the Holy One blessed be he judges men without justice we have learned that when judgment prevails on man and he is righteous it is because of the love of the Holy One blessed be he as we have learned when the Holy One blessed be he feels pity for a man it is to bring the man closer to him the Holy One blessed be he breaks the body so as to give the soul total control and man can come closer to him with love as is fitting. And the soul controls man while his body is weak and 27 a man needs to have a weak body and a strong soul that shall grow stronger still than he is beloved by the Holy One blessed be he according to the friends the Holy One blessed be he causes sorrow to the righteous in this world so that the righteous may merit the world to come. 28 When the soul is weak and the body strong man is hated by the Holy One blessed be he who does not care for him therefore he inflicts no suffering on him. In this world his life runs smoothly and perfectly for if this man gives alms or performs a kindness the Holy One blessed be he rewards him in this world so that he will have no portion in the world to come this is why Ankylos translated the verse and he repays them that hate him to their face to harm 710 as and he repays them that hate him in this world thus the righteous person who always experiences pain is beloved by the Holy One blessed be he this is true only if he is found to have committed no sin that merits punishment 29 there are several aspects to this matter first we see that the Shechinah does not dwell in a place of sorrow but only in a place of joy if a place has no joy the Shechinah will not abide there this is echoed in the verse but now bring me a minstrel and it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of Hashem came upon him to Melashim 315 for assuredly the Shechinah does not dwell in a place of sadness from where do we derive this principle we learn this from Yaakov from whom the Shechinah departed during the time he mourned Yosef when joy came upon him with the good news about Yosef immediately the spirit of Yaakov their father revived Beersheet 4527 there is a mystery here for where is joy in a righteous man who is broken by troubles and is weak and suffering surely he must be saddened with no joy at all 30 we must look into another matter for many just men who are beloved of the Holy One blessed be he do not suffer bodily pain or diseases their bodies never weaken why are they not as the other righteous men why is there a difference between those who were physically broken and those who were healthy 31 it is said that those who live well are righteous the children of righteous men as has already been explained while the others whose bodies were crushed are righteous but are not children of righteous men yet we see righteous men whose fathers are righteous even whose fathers were of righteous Men yet they still suffer much pain why do they suffer bodily pain and spend their days in grief 32 there is a mystery here for all the works of the Holy One blessed be here according to truth and justice for the work
Mukta is filled and shines from Mazel which is Yezid 35 Therefore all those who are sentenced according to justice and crushed in this world yet are also truly righteous suffer by reason of the soul nefesh that they received from the Mukta while she was defective therefore the Holy One blessed be he has compassion for them in the world to come 36 Rabbi Lazar said that the Holy One blessed be he does everything according to justice if he brings suffering on a righteous man he does so. To purify that soul nefesh and bring it to the world to come for all the deeds of the Holy One blessed be he are true and just to remove from the soul the filth that accumulated in this world the body is crushed and the soul cleansed therefore the Holy One blessed be he brings pain to the just man so that he will be cleansed from all sins and thereby merit life in the world to come as it is written Hashem tries the righteous tail in 115 as we have already learned section. For only he shall not go into the veil. Rabbi Shimon discourses on the spiritual significance of and the benefits enjoyed by those who receive their souls from the realm of Malchud when she is defective. The relevance of this passage, the energy arising out of these verses, helps reduce the pain and suffering that we endure as a result of negative deeds in present and past lives. Meditating to share this energy with others helps to reduce their pain and suffering as well. The spiritual benefits associated with the moon's positive aspects are aroused in our life, and the negative influences arising from the moon are averted. 37. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse: Only he shall not go into the veil nor come near the two altar because he has a blemish that he profane not my holy places. For I Hashem do sanctify them. Vayikra 2123. He shall not go into the veil. Come and behold, at the time the river is flowing and comes out from Eden, which is yet and issues the souls to. The Mukva the Mukva conceives with them and they all abide within her in a room within a room where the walls are covered with wallpaper or carpets. 38 When the moon is rendered defective by the same aspect of the evil serpent all the souls that are issued at that time although they were all pure and sacred are flawed since they emerged at a defective time the bodies are crushed and suffer pains and afflictions whoever that these souls reach the Holy One blessed be he cares for and loves. Those who are broken although their souls are sad instead of joyous. 39 The secret is that they remain as above in the Mukva when the body is flawed the soul inside remains the same as in the Mukva because the soul resided within the flawed Mukva it resides now within the flawed body the one state resembles the other therefore they are renewed like the moon as it is written and it shall come to pass that every new moon and every Shabbat shall all flesh come to bow down to the ground before. Me says Hashem Yachaya 6623 All flesh assuredly for they are in need of renewal along with the moon 40 Those righteous are the constant companions of the moon the Mukva and have the identical defects she therefore dwells always within them and never leaves them as it is written him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit Yachaya 5715 And Hashem is near to them who are of a broken heart Tehillim 3419 That I ask to those who suffered from the same defect as the moon those who are always near her and he saves such as are of a contrite spirit by giving them a portion of the life flowing into the Mukva for renewal because they who suffered with her shall also be renewed with her 41 Those defects from which the righteous suffer are called sufferings of love because they are caused by love and not by the man himself they are of love because the light of the smaller love was impaired when rejected by the greater love therefore the righteous are her companions and share her flow happy is their portion in this world and in the world to come for they merited to be her friends as it is written of them for my brethren and companions sakes tail 1228 section 5 behold my servant shall prosper in this complex and difficult section an aspect of the relationship between Zer and the upper world and Malchud our lower world at the time of the latter's creation is revealed further explaining why the wicked often seem to prosper while the good suffer the mystery of the title verse is discussed revealing that at the end of the period of correction fate shall be rekindled in men and Malchud presented here as the moon will once more be warmed and illuminated by the light there follows a detailed analysis of Torah verses in question and answer form the hidden meaning of the verses is revealed as a parable of the yearning for union by opposites such as male and female this is one of the Zohar's major themes through the story of Yosef and Yaakov we are shown that male and female are meant to be together as one for blessings abide only where male and female are united the Malchut is then described with the same attributes as the male he is wise for example whereas she is wisdom he is mighty she is mighty he is a king she is a kingdom the male is then described with the same attributes as the Mukva in a profound exposition of apparent duality that governs material creation finally by suggesting a subtle link between the violation of kosher laws regarding the consumption of living flesh and the illicit yearning of one sex for the other Rabbi Yehuda resolves a discussion about the meaning of the term and evil report the relevance of this passage the mystical power of these words enriches and deepens our marital relationships while also helping the unmarried to merit the appearance of their true soul made it further arouses the light of the upper world to radiate in our physical Existence this light also helps cleanse prior negative sexual experiences and thoughts 42 he opened the discussion with the verse behold my servant shall prosper he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high Yeshua 5213 happy is the portion of the righteous to whom the holy one blessed be he revealed the ways of the Torah so they may follow them come and behold the verse behold my servant shall prosper contains a supernal mystery which has already been explained yet come and behold when the holy one blessed be he created the universe the secret of Zeir and and Mukva he made the moon and endowed her with the same stature as that of Zeir and later he decreased her lights in such a way that she had nothing of her own save what she received from Zeir and because she made herself small she shone from the sun signified by Zeir and by the power of the supernal lights in IT 43 while the temple existed Israel diligently proceeded with sacrifices offerings and Rituals performed by the priests Levites and the children of Israel creating unification and causing the lights to shine within the Mukva 44 after the temple was destroyed the light darkened and the moon the Mukva no longer shone from the sun's EIR and the sun withdrew from her and did not shine therefore as we have learned no day passes without curses sorrow and pain 45 when the time comes for the moon to shine with her own strength at the end of correction then it is written Behold my servant shall prosper which is an allusion to the moon behold my servant shall prosper refers to the secret of the faith which is the Mukva the words shall prosper refer to the supernal awakening which will resemble a man who smells an odor and becomes alert and attentive 46 he shall be exalted means that the Mukva shall be filled from that facet of the light that is superior to all the lights indicating Keter he shall be exalted dash as in and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. Yeshayah 3018 refers to the light of Keter and extolled on the side of Abraham signifies Jesus and Behai on the side of its hot means Bira while very on the side of Yaakov. Yes, this means that the Mukva will thus be filled by all these greats and although this has already been explained differently all is one in the secret of wisdom. 47 At that time the Holy One blessed be he will intensify energy above so as to shine well upon the moon. The Mukva as it is written moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. Yeshayah 3026 Thus will supernal light be added to her own and all the dead buried in the dust will be stirred into life. 48 He calls him servant masculine form though this alludes to the Mukva for the secret path to his master's keys is in his hand thus the perfection of the Mukva is made known through him her messenger the same applies to the verse and Abraham said to these are at Bershi 242 who is the moon namely the Mukva as we have learned and she is revealed through Matatron the servant messenger of his master therefore the word servant was used in both places 49 the eldest of his house Bershi 242 refers to Matatron who is called old as in I have been young and now I'm old Tehillim 3725 the minister of the world who is Matatron said this phrase that ruled over all that he had Bershi 242 as all the colors green white and red are reflected in him 50 put I pray you your hand under my thigh but refers to the righteous namely Jesus since he is the existence and life of the world when he holds on to Jesus the servant is appointed to bring life to the dwellers of the dust and he becomes perfected through the supernal spirit to return spirits and souls to their places in the skeletons and putrefied cadavers underneath the ground 51 and I will make you swear by Hashem the Elohim of heaven Bershi 243 he said that it is written and I will make you swear what is the meaning of I will make you swear he answers that it means he will be clothed in
Land of Israel shall rise but not bodies from other nations which defile the land. 52 Therefore in the verse that you shall not take a wife to my son what is meant by my son he answers that all the souls in the world that come from the river which flows out from Eden which is Yezid are the children of the Holy One. Blessed be he therefore that you shall not take a wife means a body to my son refers to the soul of the daughters of the CNA and are the bodies of the heathen nations. Which the Holy One blessed be he will shake out of the Holy Land as it is written that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Eo 3813 as dirt is shaken out of a garment. 53 But you shall go to my country and to my kindred. Bear she 244 in this verse. My country is the Holy Land which precedes all other countries as we have learned of the verse. But you shall go to my country and to my kindred. He asks why repeat my kindred after saying my country. He answers my country is the Holy Land as we said and my kindred are the children of Israel. 54 It is written and the servant took Bear she 2410 as we have learned this is a reference to Monotron. 10 camels are the 10 grades which the servant governs. They are a likeness to the above like the grades of Atzalot of the camels of his master means they bear a likeness to his master's camels. That I ask the grades of the Mukba of Atzalot his master as we have learned and the servant rules over them and is established. Through them 55 for all the goods of his master were in his hand. Bear she 2410 refers to the goodness and the lofty fragrance issued from the supernal lights and candles. Another explanation of for all the goods of his master were in his hand is that it refers to the union of the sun's eir and which is attracted to the moon and look for through him occurs the union of male and female 56 and he arose and went to Aram Nahrim. Bear she 2410 the place in the holy land where Rachel wept when the temple was destroyed and he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water. Bear she 2411 for he wanted to add to her strength before raising and reviving the bodies. 57 in the verse at the time of evening. Bear she 2411 what time is referred to he replied it is Shabbat Eve namely is at the era of the sixth millennium for the six days of creation are the secrets of six thousand years and the sixth day Shabbat Eve corresponds to the sixth millennium on which Day resurrection will occur in the phrase at the time of evening. Why say time it should have said at evening? He answers it conveys the meaning of and to his labor until the evening. Tehillim 10423 and for the shadows of the evening are lengthened. Yermeah 64 these verses are the secrets of the judgments revealed during the evening at the time of evening. Also alludes to the secret of Yezid which the servant has mended. 58 in the verse at the time that the women go out to draw water. Bear she 2411 they draw the water of the Torah at that time they will be resurrected before any other men because by drawing the water of the Torah they are strengthened by the tree of life. Thus they will come out first at the resurrection of the dead as the tree of life causes them to be the first to rise. 59 and the daughters of the men of the city come out. Bear she 2413 he asks what is meant by come out. He answers it has the same meaning as and the earth shall cast out the Shades of the dead Yeshua 2619 that is it will cast out all the bodies that are in it therefore it is written come out which alludes to the bodies that will be cast out by the earth at the time of resurrection the words to draw water mean to accept and properly receive a soul so that it will be perfected 60 and let it come to pass that the girl to whom I shall say let down your pitcher I pray you that I may drink Bear she 2414 we have learned that every soul that strove in this world to know its master by means of the mysteries of divine wisdom will rise to the highest grade a grade higher than all the souls who neither conceived nor attained knowledge these will be the first to revive this is the question that the servant wished to ask so that he could determine what the soul dealt with in this world and thus learn whether it is worthy of being resurrected first this is the meaning of let down your pitcher I pray you that I may drink 61 and she will say to me you may also drink Bear she 2444 you need to drink and receive water yourself first after I have served you I will also draw for your camels because these other chariots although they are watered through this grade are watered mainly from the worship of the righteous who know well how to serve their master for the righteous know how to nourish each grade properly therefore if she says I will also draw for your camels then she shall be the woman whom Hashem has appointed for my master son the body which is surely appointed to that supernal soul 62 come and behold we learn that the male yearns for the female by which the illumination of Chakma is drawn from the Mukba and a soul is created the female yearns for the male by which Shesedim are drawn from the male who rises and mingles with the soul upward thus they become included within one another the Chakma of the female with the Shesedim of the male this forms the soul that is complete IT from this Procedure the servant divine that if she says drink which alludes to drawing the chakma I will also draw for your camels namely continuing the flow of Shesedim and she is indeed the woman the body who will execute the wishes of the soul issuing from the male which is Zeir and including both chakma and Shesedim 63 these bodies will be raised to life earlier as we have said after these are revived all other bodies outside Yisrael will be raised into perfect existence and resurrected with the renewal of the moon for the light of the moon will then be as the light of the sun the world will then be renewed as before at that time it is written let Hashem rejoice in his works Tehillim 10431 64 therefore behold my servant shall prosper means that the servant Monotron will know how to return each soul to its own place that is to the body worthy of it as was said he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high Yeshayah 5213 on the side of all those supernal Grade 65 Just as many were astonished at you saying surely his visage is too marred to be that of a man and his form to be that of the sons of man. Yeshayah 5214 Come and behold we have learned that when the temple was destroyed and the Shechinah exiled to foreign countries it is written behold the mighty ones shall cry outside ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. Yeshayah 337 They all wept for her they mourned and grieved for the Shechinah who went from her place into exile. Exile changes her and her husband Zeir and who withholds his life for there is no one to shine upon as it is written the sun shall be darkened in his going forth. Yeshayah 1310 Therefore his visage is too marred to be that of a man. Another explanation of the verse surely his visage is too marred to be that of a man is that it refers to the servant Monotron who at the time of exile was changed in form and colors which were green white red 66. Yet another explanation of surely is Visage is too marred to be that of a man is that it has the same meaning as the verse I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Yeshayah 503 from the day the temple was destroyed the heavens meaning Zeir and did not hold their light the secret is that blessings dwell only where there are male and female as has been explained in relation to the verse male and female he created them and Elohim blessed them Bereshit 127 to 28 but in exile where male and female are not united it is written his visage is too marred to be that of a man Yeshayah 5214 67 it is similar to the meaning of the righteous perished Yeshayah 571 which does not read perishes or will perish but rather perish is lost which means that the righteous lost his blessings for blessings abide only where male and female are united 68 therefore when the male is not with the female the souls released from her are different than those issued when the sun Zeir and was. United with the moon and Mukba as we learned for as Zeir and Mukba were changed during the exile so the souls of their offspring were different from the previous ones of this it is written these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef Bereshit 372 after Yosef became like Yaakov and the sun united with the moon the virtue of the souls is elevated but they changed during exile 69 and the lad Bereshit 372 means that because their union is never broken the righteous which is Yezid and righteousness which is the Mukba are constantly together the Mukba is described with the same attributes as the male with the addition of the female suffix for example he is wise she is wisdom he is mighty she is mighty he is a king she is a kingdom and the male is described with the same attributes as the Mukba as it is written and the lad have naar as the Mukba is called girl have naar so as he is called lad 70 with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah Bereshit 372 Yosef is found within them all twelve tribes even in the sons of the handmaids the hind parts of the Shechinah he renews them appropriately and delights them with his mirth for all branches and leaves of the Shechinah are blessed by his joy that is even the hind parts of the Shechinah which are called leaves in accordance with the verse whose leaf shall not wither Yeshishkel 47 12 are perfected through him 71 and these are the generations of Yaakov Yosef Bereshit 372 we have learned that
Yosef told this by his own invention and was therefore punished for it. 73 According to one explanation, Rabbi Yehuda said Yosef's evil report is that they cast their eyes upon the daughters of the land which is considered to be evil because IT allowed the unholy grades to nourish the side of defilement. Section 6 Now Yisrael loved Yosef using the story of Yosef and his many colored coat as an analogy. Rabbi Lazar discusses the spiritually privileged position of the children of Israel and the enmity this inspires in idolatrous nations. We learned that Yaakov's love for Yosef over his brothers and the coat that he gave Yosef was the immediate cause of the exile itself, which is in turn shown to be a parable of human history. The relevance of this passage the children of Israel are designated as the chosen people in response to the measure of their internal vessel, the desire to receive which is more intense than that of other nations for this reason. They are the channel through which the light of the Creator emerges into our world when the desire to receive is directed towards the self alone. There is a lack of light in our world and this instigates negative repercussions from other nations. These other nations sense the lack of light which creates enmity between them and the children of Israel and is ultimately the cause for the continuing exile. Thus exile is both a personal and an historical occurrence when the hardships of life reach. Their extreme this is a spiritual connection to the exile of the children of Israel which exists to this very day. The exile is also an effect of our failure to direct our desires towards positive and sharing causes the spiritual forces of liberation present in this passage can hasten both our personal redemption and also the final redemption of the entire world. 74 Now Israel loved Yosef more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a structured. Bear sheet 373 Rabbi Lazar began the discussion with the verse Come my people enter you into your chambers and shut your doors about you hide yourself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed Yeshayah 2620 Come and behold how much did the Holy One bless be he loved the children of Israel he had more love for them than for all the other heathen nations thus he warned them and guarded them in their action 75 Come and behold judgment hovers about the world three times a day during these times it behooves a man to take heed and be watchful lest judgment shall fall on him this is so at specific times as has already been explained 76 the three times are when morning comes and Abraham is awakened into the world where he holds on to judgment so that he is attached to it within the first three hours judgment is driven from its place to be awakened within Yaakov until the time is come from Incha then the lower judgment is stirred to be attached to the upper Judgment then one judgment joins another and it behooves us to be on our guard. 77 Moreover when judgment is upon the world and death is in the marketplace no man should walk alone in a public place as has been explained elsewhere man should shut himself in and never venture out as Nosh did when he shut himself in the ark to avoid being found in the presence of the angel of destruction. 78 Therefore come my people enter you into your chambers. Yeshayah 2620 means shut yourself inside your house and shut your doors about you so as not to be seen by the destroying angel hide yourself for a little moment until the anger be overpassed because after the judgment has passed the angel of destruction has no permission to harm you. 79 Come and behold it is the affection that the Holy One blessed be he harbors for Israel and is drawing them near him that causes the other heathen nations to hate Israel for they are kept away from the Holy One blessed be he while Israel are. Near 80 come and behold as a result of the exceptional love Yaakov had for Yosef his brothers conspired against him to slay him. Bershi 3718 how much more do the idolatrous nations hate Israel because of the love that the Holy One blessed be he has for Israel above them. 81 come and behold see what this love which Yaakov had for Yosef over his brothers caused Yosef was exiled from his father who then joined him by this action he brought exile upon the tribes and the Sheshanah. Although it was decreed in the covenant the reason nevertheless was that he loved him better than his brothers it has been explained that all this happened because of the many colored coat he made him as it is written and when his brethren saw he hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Bershi 374 section 7 and Yosef dreamed a dream Rabbi Shia discusses dreams as a form of divine revelation situated beneath prophecy and vision in the hierarchy of Revelatory experiences dreams comprise a mixture of truth and falsehood and serve as an admonition to the dreamer once given the interpretation of a dream can influence both its meaning and its fulfillment according to Rabbi Shimon the dreamer's awareness and interpretation is not necessary for fulfillment the interpretation of Yosef's dream by his brothers whereby they sealed their fate warns us not to dismiss our dreams too quickly or to share them with those who are not friends. The relevance of this passage reading this section raises awareness of the vital information dreams often provide to help in our spiritual development we learn to protect ourselves against negative dream interpretations and their manifestation 82 and Yosef dreamed a dream Bershi 375 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you I Hashem make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream Bar 126 come and Behold how many grades of prophecy the Holy One blessed be he formed they stand upon each other one grade superior to another higher than the other they all nourish each other according to their ability some from the right and some from the left as is proper 83 come and behold the prophets in the world are nourished from one aspect from two known grades Netzach and Had which are seen within the mirror had Marah that has no reflection which is the Mukba as it is written I Hashem make myself known to him in a vision had Marah Bimid bar 126 this is the mirror that reflects all the colors namely white red and green which represent the three columns of Zeir and Benit is known as the dull mirror the phrase and speak to him in a dream of it refers to the 60th part of prophecy as has been explained it is Gabriel's grade the sixth grade beneath the grade of prophecy who supervises dreams 84 come and behold every well-formed dream proceeds from that grade of angel Gabriel because it is from an angel every dream includes some lies therefore parts of dreams are true and parts are false no dream is without both 85 because a dream has both true and false elements all the dreams in the world follow verbal interpretations as was explained in relation to the verse and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was Bershi 4113 for it comes to pass according to its own interpretation what is the reason a dream contains truth and lies hence the words of interpretation prevail over everything in that they determine whether the true or the false part shall prevail a dream therefore needs a favorable interpretation Rabbi Yehuda said that because a dream is of a lower grade that of angel Gabriel and speech the secret of the Nukba has power over the angel dreams follow their own interpretations which come from the aspect of speech and proceed from the Nukba called speech ruling over the angel Gabriel 86 he continued with the verse in a dream and a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbering upon the bed then he opens the ears of men and with discipline seals their instruction Eo 3315 to 16 come and behold when man lies in his bed he should first acknowledge the kingdom of heaven over him then utter a verse of mercy the friends explain that when a man sleeps in his bed his soul leaves him to soar above each soul according to its own way 87 when people fall asleep in their beds the soul departs in slumbering upon the bed then he opens the ears of men thus the holy one blessed be he reveals to the soul through the great in charge of dreams namely Gabriel what will happen in the world in the future or that which corresponds to his innermost thoughts that his truth lies or both thus through admonition a man receives knowledge of things to come for this reason he is told of future events 88 a man is not given this knowledge while the body is strong the angel informs the soul and it Soul informs the man the dream comes to the souls from above when the souls depart from the body and ascend each according to its merit. 89 How many grades are in the secret of the dream and the secret of wisdom come and behold a dream is one grade a vision is another and a prophecy a third all these grades are in ascending order the dream is beneath the vision and the vision is beneath the prophecy. 90 And Yosef dreamed a dream and told it to his brethren and they hated him yet did. More Bershi 375 from this we learn that a man should tell his dream only to someone who loves him if the listener does not love him he shall bring evil upon him for if the dream changes he is the reason that the true meaning of the dream is not fulfilled because of his incorrect interpretation. 91 Come and behold Yosef told his dream to his brothers who did not love him and so fulfillment of the dream was delayed. 22 years Rabbi Yossi asked how do we know that hatred prevented the dream? From being carried out from the words and they hated him yet the more Bershi 378 this hatred caused accusations to be brought against him and the dream was
The dreamer being conscious of it or that it does not come true at all he answers it means that the dream comes true but the dreamer does not know it for there is a power dwelling upon the dream which forces it to come true only the dreamer is not aware whether the dream comes true or not just as one does not know the contents of an unopened letter 94 everything that happens in the world depends on a dream or a proclamation before it becomes reality we have learned that before any matter enters the world a proclamation resounds in heaven from where it is spread throughout the world it is done by a crier as it is written surely Hashem Elohim will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants the prophets Amos 37 this was when there were prophets in the world when the prophets were gone sages took their places and when the sages were gone the future was announced by a dream and if not by a dream through birds in the sky as has been already explained Section 8 and his brothers went to feed. The section touches upon the role of providence in the story of Yosef and especially of his sale into slavery since when Yosef's brothers sold him they were in collaboration with the Shechinah. The relevance of this passage the longest and strongest master-slave relationship is that between man and his ego all of us are in bondage to our reactive whims and egocentric desires we are also prisoners of other people's perceptions of us our ego. Is our task master and the ego is so good at its job most of us don't even realize we are in bondage therefore the light of the creator will send us challenging opportunities to provoke our ego and highlight our self-centeredness the light of this passage opens our eyes and shows us the way to freedom by allowing us to recognize life's hardships for what they really opportunities to rise above the power of impulse and effect inner transformation 95 and his brothers went to feed there. Father's flock in Shem Bereshit 3712 Rabbi Shimon asked why is the particle ET the added he answers the preposition ET has dots over it which represent the Shechinah for the Shechinah named ET dwelt with them as they were a group of ten wherever there are ten men the Shechinah hovers above them they were ten because Yosef was not with them and little Bani Ammon was at home when they went the Shechinah was among them for which reason there are dots above the particle ET 96 for that reason they were in collaboration with the Shechinah when they sold Yosef they made her a partner to their oath and made her vow not to reveal the sale of Yosef thus until the sale of Yosef was made known the Shechinah did not rest upon Yaakov 97 if you say that the Shechinah was not with the tribes come and behold the verse there the tribes used to go up the tribes of Yah appointed practice for Israel to give thanks to the name of Hashem Tehillim 1224 they were all just and pious. The sustenance of the inhabitants of the world for the whole world endured thanks to them both above and below in the upper and lower world section 9 of Jerusalem built. This section begins with a brief discussion of the preordained roles of David and Solomon in the construction of the temple and then proceeds to address the relationship between the terrestrial Jerusalem and the heavenly Jerusalem it is we see mirrored by the relationship of the children of Israel. To the upper and lower worlds the relevance of this passage our planet contains many spiritual energy centers that serve as portals through which the supernal light of the upper world flows into our dimension Israel is the energy center of the entire planet the city of Jerusalem is the energy source of Israel the temple is the primal source of energy for Jerusalem and the holy of holies is the fountainhead of spiritual energy for the temple reading this passage connects us to Jerusalem it Temple and ultimately to the Holy of Holies it ensures that all our prayers, deeds and meditations draw their light from this wellspring of spiritual energy. 98 he then quoted the verse I was glad when they said to me let us go into the house of Hashem Tehillim 1224 it has been explained that David said this when he set his heart on building the temple as it is written and it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of Hashem the Elohim of Israel I may lash him 817. But then it is written yet you shall not build the house but your son that shall come forth out of your loins he shall build the house to my name I may lash him 819 all the children of Israel knew that and asked when will David die so that his son Solomon can rise and build the temple as our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem Tehillim 1222 and we will go up to offer sacrifices 99 for all that they used to ask when will this old man die David was nevertheless glad and Rejoiced on account of his son who it was said would reign in his stead and carry out the building the temple then he began to praise the Shechinah saying O Jerusalem built as a city that is joined together Tehillim 1223 100 we learned that the Holy One blessed be he formed the terrestrial Jerusalem the Nukba in the image of the heavenly Jerusalem Bina with each facing the other for the Nukba is established with all the amendments of Bina as it is written in the place Hashem which you have made for you to dwell in Shemad 1517 built means that the Holy One blessed be he will cause Jerusalem to descend from above completely built therefore he says built that is joined together as has already been explained he said it should have been our joined in the plural he answers the mother Bina joined her daughter the Nukba and they became as one hence it is written in the singular as has been explained 101 there the tribes used to go up Tehillim 1224 they sustained it world and support the lower world and not just the lower world but also the upper world as it is written the tribes of Yahweh appointed practice also testimony for Israel precisely for Israel because the children of Israel support the lower world they bear testimony above in the upper world all this is to thank the Holy One blessed be he on all sides as it is written to give thanks to the name of Hashem of it section 10 and a certain man found him this section addresses the role of providence in the sale of Yosef to the Egyptians and illustrates our inability to interpret events and their causal relationships as positive or negative since we are ignorant of their role in God's preordained design the relevance of this passage the selling of Yosef into slavery and his subsequent rise from the status of prisoner to the second in command of Egypt alludes to our ability to take control over the physical reality and triumph over our most base Desires thereby freeing our souls the strength to accomplish this is aroused within us by the liberating light set aflame by these Kabbalistic verses in addition we become more cognizant of our limited perspectives on life particularly when hardships strike just as Yosef's imprisonment was a dire and tragic predicament that was eventually turned into triumph our afflictions can be transformed into conquest given the right state of enlightened consciousness that is the foresight and wisdom to see beyond the immediate circumstances enlightenment is thus awakened in us by the lessons and light emitted through the luminous letters of the Hebrew language appearing in this passage 102 and a certain man found him and behold he was wandering in the field and the man asked him saying what are you seeking Gershi 3715 it is written earlier and Israel said to Yosef do not your brothers feed the flock in Shem come and I will send you to them Ibid 13 why did the perfected Yaakov who loved Yosef better than his other sons and knew that his brothers hated him sent Yosef to them he answers because he knew they were righteous he did not distrust them the Holy One blessed be he caused all this to carry out the decree he made to Abraham in the covenant between the pieces 103 we have found it stated in ancient books that it was imperative that the sons of Yaakov have mastery over Yosef before he descended to Egypt for if he had gone there before they dominated him the Egyptians would have ruled over Israel in perpetuity and Israel would not have been able to leave therefore it came to pass that his brothers were Yosef's masters and sold him as a slave thus when Yosef was later crowned king of Egypt Israel ruled over them all for they obtained mastery over Yosef their king by selling him to be a slave it was as if they ruled over the Egyptians themselves this weakened Egyptian power and enabled Israel to be freed from IT 104 come and behold Yosef was the supernal covenant Yosef of Zeir and as long as the covenant Yosef endured the Shechinah lived within Israel in peace once Yosef the supernal covenant was gone from the world and sold as a slave the covenant the Shechinah in Israel all went into exile this has been explained in connection with the verse now there arose a new king over Egypt who knew not Yosef Shemad 18 this indicates that his rank had been revoked and he went into exile the holy one blessed be he caused all this and it happened as it had to 105 and a certain man found him refers to Gabriel it has been explained here that it is written and a certain man found him and elsewhere it is written the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning Daniel 921 by analogy we learned that the man in the first sentence is also Gabriel and he was wandering Bereshit 37 15 in every way for trusting his brothers for seeking fraternity but not obtaining it and for looking for them without Finding them therefore the man asked him saying what are you seeking section 11 I seek my brothers Rabbi Yehuda interprets the title quotation to indicate Yosef's intimate association with righteousness
Display compassion and forgiveness even when we feel it is not deserved is stimulated by the words of this passage 106 And he said I seek my brothers and a man said they are departed from here Rabbi Yehuda quoted the verse so oh, that you were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother when I should find you outside I would kiss you and none would scorn me Sure Hasherim 81 this verse has already been explained by the friends the congregation of Yisrael the Mukva said to the king to whom peace belongs to Zeir and know that you were as my brother as Yosef was to his brothers Yosef said to them now therefore fear not I will nourish you and your little ones Bear she 5021 and he provided for them in time of famine therefore the congregation of Israel said to Zeir and know that you were as my brother as Yosef was to his brothers 107 according to another explanation of oh that you were as my brother Yosef Yosef said this to the Sheshana whom he joined and to whom he cleaved that sucked the breast of my mother means that when she receives smoke in from I am there is friendship and unity between them I should find you outside in exile in a strange land I would kiss you to merge her spirit with his and none would scorn me dash although I am in a foreign land 108 come and behold although Yosef's brothers did not act as his brothers when he fell into their hands he was a brother to them when they fell into his hands this is understood from it verse and he comforted them and spoke kindly to them Bereshit 5021 he spoke kindly in every way until they believed him section 12 there is anger and there is anger this section provides a discussion on the two species of anger one blessed and the other cursed Rabbi Shimon then explains the ritual of cleansing the hands each morning and why the sanctification is necessary the relevance of this passage at times we must exert judgment or anger that is rooted in love and sharing positive anger is a form of love as when a parent disciplines a child out concern for the child's safety ego-based anger however creates negative energy if a parent punishes a child as an expression of inner frustration this anger is cursed one version of anger generates love the other creates darkness the words that reveal these truths help us attain the wisdom to meet out anger rooted in love which is therefore blessed with the light of the creator 109 come and behold and they said one to another let a man to his brother Bershi 3719 these are Shimon and Levi who were brothers in every respect because they both came from the side of harsh judgment and their anger was murderous anger as it is written curse be their anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel Bershi 497 110 come and behold the secret of this matter there are two kinds of anger one kind of anger is blessed above and below and is called blessed as we learned from it verse blessed be Abram of the most high possessor of heaven and earth Bershi 1419 it has already been explained that although Abraham was engaged in war and killed people it was still said of him blessed be Abram because he sanctified the name of heaven in doing it another kind of anger is cursed above and below and we have learned that it is called cursed as it is written you are cursed above all cattle Bershi 314 and cursed be their anger 111 two mountains rely on this Mystery as it is written that you shall put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Devarim 1129 they correspond to the two grades of one called blessed and the other cursed of these mountains as well. One is called cursed and the other blessed Shimon and Levi are from the side of harsh judgment and from this harsh and rigorous judgment the accursed anger which is called cursed is issued 112 come and behold from the side of harsh judgment anger travels in two directions one blessed and the other accursed similarly two sons issued from its hot the one blessed and the other accursed above and below each went to his own side one dwelt in the holy land while the other was in the mount of Seir as a cunning hunter a man of the field Bershi 2527 one dwelt in a place of desolation and ruin while the other was dwelling in tents as it should be 113 therefore each of the two grades blessed and cursed goes to its own side from the former comes all the blessings in the world from above and below all goodness illumination redemption and salvation from the latter comes all the curses ruin blood waste evil and all that is defiled in the world 114 rabbi shimon quoted the verse i wash my hands in innocence so i compass your altar hashem tehillim 266 this has already been explained yet come and behold the mystery is that no man in the world avoids tasting death at night as a result the spirit of defilement hovers above his body the reason is that the holy soul leaves him at that time and once it leaves the spirit of defilement hovers above his body and he is defiled 115 when the soul returns to the body the filth passes away yet it remains on the hands thus a man should not pass his hands across his eyes since the spirit of defilement rests on them until they are washed when a man properly washes them he is then sanctified and called holy 116 he asks how should we sanctify ourselves with hand washing he Responded that we need a vessel beneath and a vessel above to be sanctified from the vessel above the vessel below must receive the filth of impurity and hold the contaminated water while the vessel above is used for sanctification as its water is poured on the hands the one above is blessed and the one beneath is cursed we must not empty the impure water within the house so that no one will come near it for harmful spirits gather to it and a man might be harmed by the unclean water 117a. Man should not say a blessing before he removes the filth from his hands it has been explained that a man is called unclean before he washes his hands in the morning once he washes his hands he is called pure therefore a man's hands should be washed only by the hands of a clean man as it is written and a clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean bar 1919 he who already washed his hands is called pure while he who has not is called impure 118 therefore the vessel above is pure and the vessel below is impure it is forbidden to put the impure water to any use it needs be emptied where no one shall use it or pass over it it must not be kept in the house at night for once it is spilled on the ground the spirit of defilement abides there and might cause harm it is considered wise to dig a hole for it under the ground where it can flow unseen 119 it must not be given to witches who may use it to harm people because it is water that causes the curse the holy one blessed be he wishes to purify Israel and make the people holy as it is written and will i sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean yashis 3625 section 13 and that pit was empty there was no water in it this section opens with a description of the rich rewards of studying torah both in this world and the world to come those who neglect study we are told receive punishment as rabbi yehuda points out the children of israel were exiled from it Holy Land because they abandoned the Torah the discussion moves from various interpretations of the empty pit to the actions of Joseph's brothers including Reuben's repentance and redemption the punishment of Yaakov and the removal of Yehuda as king of the tribe the relevance of this passage Kabbalistic concepts of retribution are not based on the creator who meets out penalties and rewards the light of the creator is a divine force whose only attributes are sharing and goodness this can be compared to an electrical current which can bring light to a city or can be destructive if we carelessly poke a finger into a wall socket our own free will determines whether we short circuit receive punishment or turn on the light switch gain reward the Torah is a blueprint to show us how the universe is wired so that we harness spiritual forces in a positive and productive way this wisdom and enlightenment comes to us through the intricate wiring of the words that compose these Passages and the spiritual light they emit 120 and they took him and cast him into a pit and that pit was empty there was no water in it. Bershi 3724 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse the Torah of Hashem is perfect restoring the soul. Tehillim 198 men should endeavor to study the Torah as much as possible for whoever does so gains life in this world and in the world to come and he merits both worlds even he who strives to study the Torah but does it for worldly reasons. Merits reward in this world and escapes judgment in the next 121 come and behold it is written length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Mishlei 316 length of days refers to that person who endeavors to study the Torah for its own sake for he has length of days in a world of long days signifying the everlasting world these long days which are found in the everlasting world are certainly days this means that they are surely good and worthy days in addition there is a certainty of sacredness above namely the hope for reward a man who trusts in this world should study the torah diligently to be happy in the everlasting world and in her left hand are riches and honor for he receives good reward and peace in this world 122 whoever studies the torah for its own sake will find that when he passes from the world the torah goes before him with proclamations and protects him from approaching accusers when the body lies in the grave it guards him and when the soul departs to ascend to its place it precedes the soul many closed gates are thrown open before the torah until it brings the soul to its place the torah stands by that
Remember the Torah they studied before their death, they will know all they studied before departing from the world that is penetrates inside them and speak in their innermost parts. This means that it does not come back slowly as is the nature of thought, but simultaneously as in dressing as is the nature of the viscera 125, and everything shall be clearer that it was before he died for whatever he did not grasp well than whatever he strove to understand yet did not successfully grasp is now. Clear in his innermost parts and the Torah speaks within him. This is the meaning of the verse, and when you awake it shall talk with you. Mishlei 622 Rabbi Yehuda said that whoever studied the Torah diligently in this world deserves to be occupied with it in the world to come. 126 Come and behold a man who did not have the merit to be occupied with the Torah in this world walks in darkness when he passes from the world he is put in the lowest place in Gehenom where no one pities him a place. Described as a gruesome pit, a miry clay as it is written, he brought me up also out of the gruesome pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my footsteps. Tehillim 403 127 It is therefore written of he who does not study the Torah in this world but besmirches himself with the filth of this world, and they took him and cast him into a pit. Bereshit 3724 Into Gehenom where those who do not study the Torah are sentenced, and the pit was empty, but it is empty. Because there was no water in it, that I Torah called water 128. Come and behold the punishment for neglecting the study of the Torah. Israel were exiled from the Holy Land only for being removed from and leaving the Torah. This is explained by the verse Who is the wise man that may understand this? Why does the land perish? Because they have forsaken my Torah, which I set before them. Yermeon 911 to 12. Rabbi Yossi said, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Yeshayah 513, namely of the Torah 129. Hence, everything is based on the existence of the Torah, and the world only endures by means of the Torah, which sustains the worlds above and below. As it is written, If my covenant be not day and night, it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. Yermeon 3325, 130. And they took him and cast him into a pit. Bereshit 3724. This alludes to the fact that later they cast him into Egypt, where the secret of the faith does not abide water is the secret of the faith and when it is written and the pit was empty it refers to a lack of the secret of the faith rabbi Yitzhak said if there were snakes and scorpions in the pit according to the sages it contains snakes and scorpions but no water why is it written of Reuben he might save him out of their hands if it 22 did not Reuben fear that the snakes and scorpions would harm Yosef if so how did he plan to deliver him back to his father that he might save in 131 he replied that Reuben saw that Yosef would surely come to harm in their hands for he knew how much they hated him and wished to kill him Reuben thought it was better to cast him into the pit of snakes and scorpions than to deliver him to his enemies who have no compassion for him thus the saying rather should a man throw himself into a fire or a pit full of serpents and scorpions than be delivered into the hands of his enemies 132 for if a man is righteous here in the place of snakes and scorpions, the Holy One, blessed be he, performs miracles for him, or sometimes he is saved by the merit of his fathers, but once delivered into the hands of enemies, few escape. 133, therefore he said that he might save him out of their hands. Bereshit 3722, not simply that he might save him, but rather out of their hands. Reuben said to himself, May he be saved from them, and if he dies, it is better for him to die in the pit. It is therefore written, and Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands. He saved him only from dying by their hands, even though he might have died in the pit. 134, come and behold the piety of Reuben. He knew that Shimon and Levi were ruthless when they joined forces and cunning when they joined against Shem. They killed all the males, they were not satisfied, so they took the women and the little ones, gold and silver, and all beasts and precious vessels, in short, everything that was to be found in the city, yet even this was not. Enough so they took what was in the field as it is written and that which was in the city and that which was in the field they took Bereshit 3428 135 Reuben said if such a great city did not escape them and if this boy falls in their hands not a shred of flesh will remain therefore it is better to save him from them for they will leave no sign of him for my father to see 136 even if he dies in the pit his brothers will not prevail against him his body will remain intact and I will return him whole to my father therefore it is written that he might save him out of their hands to deliver him back to his father I will be able to return him to my father even though he will die there he therefore said the child is not Bereshit 3730 instead of not alive because he was not even dead 137 come and behold what Reuben did he wisely joined them and said let us not kill him Bereshit 3721 instead of do not you take his life for he was not there when Yosef was Sold they each then attended their father for one day when it was Reuben's day he did not want Yosef to perish it is therefore written and Reuben returned to the pit and behold Yosef was not in the pit dash not even dead and he rent his clothes immediately he returned to his brothers and said the child is not 138 even Reuben was not informed of the sale of Yosef it has already been explained that the Shechina was a partner in the vow not to reveal the sale of Yosef therefore Reuben did not know of it and it was not revealed to him until Yosef made himself known to his brothers 139 come and behold the pleasure Reuben attained in trying to save Yosef's life it is written let Reuben live and not die to Aram 336 for although he knew that the birthright was taken from him and given to Yosef nevertheless he tried to save his life therefore Moshe prayed for him saying let Reuben live and not die and be supported in this world and in the world to come what is the reason it is the saving Yosef's life and repenting for defiling his father's bed. If a man repents his sins, the Holy One blessed be he will revive him in this world and in the world to come. 140 come and behold, and they took Yosef's coat. Bereshit 3731. It has been explained that this is because a coat's blood resembles human blood. Yet come and behold, even when an act is well executed without committing any sin, the Holy One blessed be he is strict with the righteous even to a hair's breadth. 141. Yaakov did well to kill a goat for his father, yet by offering a goat which comes from the side of harsh judgment, he weakened the aspect of the strict judgment of his father, since he is of its aspect as its haku pertains to severe judgment. And although the judgment took hold of the goat, Yaakov was punished in that his sons brought its blood before him. 142. It is written of Yaakov, and she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Bear she 2716 therefore it is said of his sons and they dipped the coat in the blood Bear she 3731 this was measure for measure since he caused that its hot trembled very much of 33 his sons made him tremble when they said no now whether it be your son's coat or not of 32 143 rabbi she said it is written concerning him yakov are you my son he's or not Bear she 2721 and addressing him they said is it your son's coat or not Bear she 3732 this is because the holy one blessed be he is strict with the righteous to a hair's breadth in everything they do 144 rabbi abba said that when the tribe saw their father's grief they surely regretting selling yosef and determined to rescue him if they could find him when they saw they could not rescue him they turned to yehuda who advised them to sell him and rejected him from among them for he now was their king and when they deposed him it is written and it came to pass at that time that yehuda went down from his brothers Bereshit 381 section 14th Zion and Jerusalem your Rabbi Yehuda discusses the creation of the universal structure that issued from Zion the central point of faith and perfection while Zion and Jerusalem are one they represent the two grades of judgment and mercy through Bino which correlates to understanding the attributes of mercy and judgment are commingled and reconciled in the world the relevance of this passage throughout life our actions disrupt and misalign the supernal forces that embody the attributes of judgment and mercy this occurs on both the personal and universal level in line with individual and collective actions of humanity consequently judgment may occur in place of mercy the world may seem especially hard and judgmental toward us in response we may find ourselves overreacting to situations where we normally respond with restraint and patience balancing these two attributes in our behavior is vital an example of Judgment and mercy is illustrated by the following parent-child situation. A child terribly misbehaves. The parent becomes extremely upset and immediately spanks the youngster. The parent reacted to the situation and the act of judgment was rooted in selfish frustration. The child might attempt to change his behavior but he does so only out of fear. Cabalistically, the parent needs to balance judgment with
His nature and behavior is influenced in that direction. Reading this section helps balance the forces of judgment and mercy in our interactions with the world. Moreover, these verses open us to the light so that we ourselves can be worthy of mercy rather than judgment when the time comes for them to appear in our lives. 145 Rabbi Yehuda quoted the verse Hashem also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice hail and coals of fire. Tehillim 1814 Come and behold when the Holy One. Blessed be he created the universe that is when the Holy One blessed be he emanated the Mukba called world he made seven pillars for it by illuminating on her with the seven Sfirat Shizid Vira Tifer Abnet Sachad Yizid and Malchud of Zeir Anpin all of them are supported by one single pillar namely Yizid of Zeir Anpin in the verse wisdom has built her house she has hewn out her seven pillars Michelet 91 it was explained that they all stand on one grade called Yizid of Zeir Anpin it Righteous is an everlasting foundation Michelet 1025 146 when the universe was created it issued from the spot that included along with its improvements the point in the middle of the world which is Ksayan the inner Yizid of the Mukba as it is written Asam of Asaf the mighty one El Elohim Hashem has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof Tehillim 501 where did he speak from from Ksayan as it is written out of Ksayan the perfection of beauty Elohim has shown forth Tehillim 502, the place that constructs faith to perfection sign is the strength, the secret of the illumination of Chakma and the point of the whole world that is the secret of the light of Chesedim on which the world has been constructed by the Chakma in IT and wherein it is nourished by the light of Chesedim in IT 147 come and behold after stating Hashem also thundered in the heavens Tehillim 1814 Yad and the highest gave his voice which is redundant. Rabbi Yehud answers here is the secret of the faith I mentioned for Ksayan constructs and beautifies the world and the world is nourished by Ksayan from its two aspects namely Chakma and Chesedim this is similar to the two grades that are one namely Ksayan and Jerusalem the former of judgment and the latter of mercy and both are one judgment is issued from one and mercy is issued from the other 148 from high up referring to the sphere of Bina, voice resounds this is the central. Reconciling column of Bina when it is heard when it reconciles the Mukba and the lights of right and left are her judgments issue forth from the Mukba and the paths of judgment and mercy may be seen the virgin Hashem also thundered in the heavens refers to the merciful court and although the highest Bina may be neither found nor known because the same voice comes out and reconciles right and left all is then under judgment and mercy as the highest Bina gives its voice to the Mukba and reconciles her two columns so it is written and the highest gave his voice Tehillim 1814 and came hail and coals of fire dash water and fire 149 come and behold when Yehuda was born it was written and she left off bearing Bershi 2935 this refers to the fourth of the four foundations called Chesed Bura Tiferet and Malchut because they are the supernal chariot of Bina and this is one of the four lakes of the throne called Malchut therefore it was written with regard to him and she Left off bearing for he is the last sphere of Malchut it is written of him and it came to pass at that time that Yehuda went down from his brother's bear she 381 he was their king being of Malchut but after selling Yosef he was deposed why because Yosef was brought down to Egypt section 15 and he called his name Er the interconnection of the upper and lower worlds is exemplified in the section concerning the fate of Yehuda's firstborn son Er Yehuda's fall and descent we're told signify the descent and obscuring of the moon and the supernal light consequently his son was born of the side of defilement and was therefore later slain by the Lord the relevance of this passage in order to grow spiritually and bring greater fulfillment to our lives we must abolish all the character traits within us that emerge from the side of defilement and darkness the end of darkness occurs the instant the light is turned on which in turn occurs at the moment we Peruse these profound words of wisdom 150 and Yehuda saw their daughter of a certain Cananite bear she 382 he asks was he not I did not the fathers avoid marrying among the Cananites he replied it has been explained by the friends that the word Cananite means merchant and she conceived and bore a son and he called his name Ar of it 3 Yehuda had 3 sons but only one shall remain because Yehuda went down and was punished for it by begetting sons and then burying them. 151 Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia were walking along the road Rabbi Yossi asked Rabbi Lazar why is it written in relation to Yehuda's firstborn and he called his name Ar using the male pronoun and of the other two sons she called his name Onan and she called his name Shelah using the female pronoun 152 he said to him come and behold this portion contains a profound secret and all is proper Yehuda went down from his brothers because the moon the became obscure and Descended from the upright grade to another grade to which the serpent is attached, it is written and turned into a certain Adelamite whose name was Jira 153, and she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ari in Resh. Bershi 383, he was evil, Hebreshi, which amounts to the same thing for evil, and Er are spelled with the same Hebrew letters because he came from the side of the evil inclination, it is written, and he called Hebiti his name Er, the particle ET adds yet another grade of filth of defilement from which he was born. This is why Er and Ra evil are identical, namely spelled with the same Hebrew letters 154. With the second son, the place was not yet sweetened and returned to holiness that happened only when Jelah, who was the most important of them all, came, it is written, and Er Yehuda's firstborn was wicked in the sight of Hashem. Bershi 387, and for the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Bershi 821, there it means. Spilling semen in vain, thus here it means he was spilling blood for he spilled semen on the ground that is why Hashem slew him. But then Yehuda said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife. Section 16 Go into your brother's wife and perform the duty of a brother in law. Rabbi Shimon begins by discussing the responsibility of the righteous man to beget children in order to ensure a place for his soul in the world to come by perpetuating the image of the holy king. Through offspring, the righteous man may prevent the reincarnation of his soul. Thus, the section addresses the necessity of marriage and of Levi rate marriage. We are also reminded of the futility and vanity of the individual who endeavors to provide only for himself without creating a family. The relevance of this passage a dark room becomes progressively brighter with each lighting of a new candle. Every soul that comes into this world is likened to a candle, though true reality, which is our Ultimate destination offers immortality and endless fulfillment during the course of human spiritual evolution. The light is temporarily dimmed. Immortality is relegated to the act of procreation and childbearing, which ensures the ongoing entrance of new souls into this world for the purpose of bringing about the final correction of humanity. In other words, the chain of humanity is immortal while the individual body remains perishable and finite. All men live for the existence of the chain until such time as humanity completes its spiritual correction and transformation. At that juncture, the force of immortality will expand and bring endless life. This transformation, the final redemption, is hastened by bringing new souls into this world whose light through the path of Torah helps diminish darkness and death and accelerate the process of correction. This light is also generated through the spiritual influences that radiate from these ancient Hebrew verses 155 and Yehuda said to Onan. Go into your brother's wife, Bershi 3821, Rabbi Shimon then quoted, I have raised up one from the north, and he is come from the rising of the sun, and he shall call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as a potter treads clay, Shea 4125, come and behold how foolish are men who neither know nor care for the ways of the Holy One, blessed be he, they are all asleep, and sleep never leaves their eyes, 156, come and behold the Holy One, blessed be he, wisely created. Man in the image of above, there is neither a member nor an organ within man that was not created by divine wisdom, as each organ alludes to a specific grade after the body is complete with all its members, the Holy One, blessed be he, joins them and inserts a sacred soul to teach the man to tread the paths of the Torah and keep its commandments so that the man will be properly perfected in accordance with the aphorism, a man's soul shall teach him, 157, now that the sacred soul is within him, he is worthy of begetting children in the image and likeness of the Holy One. Blessed be he, therefore, a man should multiply to perpetuate the image of the highest king in the universe. The secret of this is the river which issues forth supernal Yezid, whose water never stops. Similarly, a man should never stop the flowing of his river and the source in this world,
This world where it enters people 159 from the rising of the sun Yeshayah 4125, the place from which the river issues forth is Tiferet the abode of Yezid from which the shining soul comes and is born as all souls come from the union of Tiferet and Malchut and he shall come upon princes if it means that the armies of the world Imuk the called world whose armies or angels come with the stirring of the souls namely are born with them and as upon mortar if it means as a man awakening into his body which is called mortar 160 therefore the Holy One blessed be he couple souls and sends them into this world causing union between above and below and thus the source of all is blessed therefore the Holy One blessed be he created man so that he will strive to walk in his ways and never stop his river rather he will beget children 161 he whose source is dried up and does not beget children cannot enter the presence of the Holy One blessed be he when he passes from it world and he does not participate in that world come and behold it is written he did not create it a wasteland he formed it to be inhabited yeshaya 4518 therefore he created man in the likeness of above for the holy one blessed be he is kind to the world come and behold it is written that again abraham took a wife and her name was kira Bershi 251 this is the secret of the soul returning into a body to be perfected 162 come and behold it is written of the body but it pleased hashem to crush man by disease if his soul shall consider it a recompense for guilt he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the purpose of hashem shall prosper in his hand yeshaya 5310 we have to study this verse further why does it so please him he answers because it purifies him he asks why the feminine gender instead of the masculine in the verse if his soul shall consider feminine a recompense for guilt he answers because the phrase shall consider alludes to the soul Thus if the soul wishes to perfect herself properly then he shall see his seed because the soul roams around without rest and is destined to enter the seed of a man who observed the commandment of being fruitful and multiplying he shall then prolong his days in the purpose of Hashem referring to the study of the Torah shall prosper in his hand but if he did not have children the Torah does not help him 163 come and behold if a man studies the Torah day and night but does not use his source and fountain of life to beget children he is not permitted in the presence of the Holy One blessed be he we have learned that a well of water is no well unless the source feeds it for the well and the source are of one secret and we have explained that whoever has no children is judged as if the source did not flow into him namely did no work within him 164 it is written it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sadness for truly to his beloved he gives Tranquility Tehillim 1272 Come and behold how precious are the words of the Torah for each contains high and holy mysteries we have learned that when the Holy One blessed be he gave Israel the Torah he included within it all the holy and supernal mysteries that were given to the children of Israel when they received the Torah on Mount Sinai 165 Come and behold it is vain for you to rise early refers to single men without wives who are not as they should be without union with a woman. They rise up early to do their work as is manifest in the verse there is one alone without a companion yet there is no end of all his labor Kahila 48 to sit up late refers to those who retire late who are late to marry for it means rest as in because in it he rested there she 23 for a woman is considered a repose for man 166 of the verse to eat the bread of sadness Tehillim 1272 he asks what is the bread of sadness he answers that when a man has children he eats his bread joyously. With a glad heart if he does not have children he eats the bread of sadness these are assuredly those who eat the bread of sadness 167 he asks what is meant by the verse for truly to his beloved he gives tranquility tail in 1272 he answers to he who source is blessed with children the holy one blessed be he gives sleep in this world in accordance with the verse you shall lie down and your sleep shall be sweet mishlay 324 this is because he has a part in the world to come and he therefore lies in the grave and enjoys the world to come 168 there is one alone without a companion kahila 48 refers to the man who is alone in the world but not appropriately he is without a wife he is without a companion having no wife to help him he has neither son to preserve his name in israel after him nor brother to amend for him by levi rate marriage 169 yet there is no end of all his labor kahila 48 means that he labors constantly from early day to night neither is his eye satisfied with riches of it and he has not the sense to ask for whom then do I labor and bereave my soul of good it may be said that if he toils to have more food and drink to feast every day this is not so because the soul does not derive any enjoyment from it assuredly he denies his soul good of the light of the world to come because the soul is defective that is it is not properly perfected come and behold how compassionate is the holy one blessed be he toward his creatures in bringing him back in another incarnation so he can perfect himself for he wishes him to be perfected and not to be cut off from the world to come 170 rabbi she asks what is the position in the world to come of a thoroughly righteous man who engages in the study of the Torah day and night and devotes all his deeds to the name of the holy one blessed be he yet does not have children in this world or a man who tries but cannot have children or has children who die rabbi you see replied his Deeds and the Torah protect him so he is worthy of the world to come. 171 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written of the men of the truly just for thus says Hashem to the eunuchs that keep my Shabbat of plural and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant and to them will I give in my house and within my walls a memorial better than sons and daughters I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Yeshayah 564 to 5 for they have a portion in the world to come. Rabbi Yussi said to him this is good and well that is he agreed with him. 172 come and behold a thoroughly righteous man who attained all the aforementioned virtues and reached perfection but died without children inherits his place in the world to come. He asks does his wife have to marry his brother or not if she does it is in vain for he does not need his brother to perfect him having already attained his place in the world to come. 173 he answers assuredly his wife should marry his Brother for we cannot tell whether he was whole in his deeds or not if his wife marries his brother it is not in vain even if he attained perfection for the holy one blessed be he keeps a place for those who die without children or a brother to marry their wife when a thoroughly righteous man dies and his wife marries his brother he has already inherited his place and does not need the correction of the Levi rate marriage then comes a man who died childless without a redeemer in the world and is perfected by the marriage of the righteous man's wife in the meanwhile the holy one blessed be he prepares a place for the man without the redeemer until the righteous man dies then he may be perfected in the world through a Levi rate marriage this is the meaning of the verse because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest Bimidbar 3528 174 in relation to this we have learned that the righteous are destined to have children through there Death that is the children of the Levi rate marriage who perfect those who have died childless and without a brother they attain in their deaths what they did not attain during their lives hence all the works of the Holy One blessed be he are true just and compassionate toward all even those who have no brother 175 he began by quoting the verse two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor Kahila 49 this refers to those who strive to beget children in this world. For the sake of the children they leave after them they receive a good reward in this world for their sake their fathers inherit a portion of the world to come 176 come and behold the Holy One blessed be he plants trees in the world if they grow well it is good if they do not he uproots them and replants them somewhere else as many times as required such are the ways of the Holy One blessed be he intending to the good and to the correction of the world 177 go into your brothers. Wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law. Bereshit 388. I.S. redundant for Yehuda and the other tribes knew this. The only important thing he told him was and raise up seed for seed was needed for purification and for preparing an embryo to receive the remedy so that the stock would not be severed from the root. This is the meaning of and man shall return to dust. Eo 3,415, 178. Having been prepared properly after the said incarnation, they are well praised in the world to come for they. Please the Holy One, blessed be He. It is therefore written. So I praise the dead that are already dead more than the living that are yet have had not alive. Kahila 42. For they come back to life and return to a tender age. The word Adonai is in. After I am grown old, shall I have pleasure? Hebed of Bereshit 1,812. And he shall return to the days of his youth. Eo 3,324 means the days of youth and pleasure to which he returned in incarnation 179. But better than both of them is he who has. Not yet been who has not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Kahila 43
buried and come to their rest. Kahilat 810 As we said that they were born again to mend their deeds for the Holy One, blessed be he is kind and does not want the world to perish but prefers to reform the wicked through reincarnation. All his ways are true and gracious and benefit them in this world and in the world to come. Happy is the portion of the righteous who walk the true path of whom it is written. The righteous shall inherit the land. Tehillim 3729 Section 17 and the thing which he did displease Hashem this section addresses the sin which we are told defile man most in this world and in the world to come masturbation this judgment is not based upon moral or ethical principles but rather upon the metaphysical structure of the upper worlds the dark forces that challenge us throughout our spiritual development derive their strength and sustenance from the light they steal from us thus when we react or behave with intolerance towards others the light we lose strengthens the evil inclination masturbation is condemned for the simple reason that a man's seed is a substance that is closest in form to the light of the creator it is raw naked energy and therefore requires concealment when it is revealed in our physical world this concealment takes place when a man's seed is used for the direct purpose of creating life moreover sexual relations between a man and wife express the ultimate in sharing with both parties imparting pleasure to one Another in this loving and protected environment the light and power of a man's sperm cannot be appropriated or defiled by the evil inclination the spilling of a man's seed is an act that is done for immediate self-gratification consequently negative forces immediately appropriate this light and our lives grow a little bit darker hardships and misfortunes in life whether emotional financial marital or otherwise result from a lack of spiritual light we also learn of the great rewards in the world to come for a man who has trained his children to draw close to God and live by the spiritual wisdom of Torah the relevance of this passage when a man refrains from pleasuring himself through the wanton spilling of his seed his spiritual life force grows increasingly stronger this manifests in many ways including more intense sexual desire for his mate and greater emotional stability and inner peace the light of this passage helps to cleanse and eradicate the dark forces that attach to us as a result of our sexually self-gratifying actions this light helps us to recognize the spiritual benefits associated with directing our carnal desires towards sharing pleasure with our mate and drawing the light of the creator into this darkened world 181 and the thing which he did displeased Hashem so he slew him also bear sheet 3810 rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse in the morning so your seat and in the evening do not withhold your hand kahilat 116 come and behold it behooves man much to be careful lest he sin and to be heedful in his actions before the holy one blessed be he for there are numerous messengers and chieftains in the world who roam about observing the deeds of man and bearing testimony of him recording everything in the book 182 come and behold of all the sins that defile a man in this world that which defiles him the most in this world and in the world to come is spilling his semen in vain letting it out in vain by the hand or leg Brings impurity on man as it is written for you are not an L that has pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you. Tehillim 55 183 he therefore does not come inside the curtain of the Holy One blessed be he or behold the presence of Atticumen as is learned from the verses nor shall evil dwell with you. Tehillim 55 and any Yehuda's firstborn was wicked in the sight of Hashem. Verse 387 both verses indicate that he does not behold the face of Hashem hence it is written. Your hands are full of blood. Yeshua 115 which refers to letting semen by the hand which is likened to shedding blood happy is the portion of the man who fears Hashem and is guarded from the evil path and purifies himself to be occupied in the fear of his master. 184 the verse in the morning so your seed Tehillim 116 has already been explained the morning is the time of man's strength and youth he should then strive to beget children with the wife appropriate for him according to the Verse in the morning so your seed 185 then it is his time to beget children as it is written as arrows in the hand of a mighty man so are the children of one's youth. Tehillim 1274 then he is able to teach them the ways of the Holy One blessed be he and to receive good reward for the world to come as it is written happy is the man that has his quiver full of them they shall not be put to shame but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Tehillim 1275 they shall not be put to shame in the world of truth when the accusers bring accusations on them for there is no better reward in that world than the reward of he who teaches his child the fear of Hashem in the ways of the Torah 186 come and behold it is written about Abraham for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of Hashem to do justice and judgment. Bear sheet 1819 this merit stood him well in the world to come against all accusers 187 it is. Therefore written in the morning sow your seat and in the evening do not withhold your hand. Kahilat 116 even in old age called evening it is written do not withhold your hand from begetting children why for you know not which shall prosper whether this of that before Elohim and which will defend them in the world of truth. 188 hence it is written lo children are the heritage of Hashem. Kahilat 1273 this is the eternal life lit bundle of life of the soul the secret of the verse. Yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bond of life. Ishmael 2529 considered as the world to come and called heritage by the scripture who causes man to merit the heritage of Hashem. Children do the children cause man to merit the heritage of Hashem. Therefore happy is the man who has children to whom he may teach the ways of the Torah. Section 18 and she put off her widow's garments. The section explains the actions of Ruth and Tamar two women who lost. Their first husbands and later conceived through Levi-rate marriage we learn that both acted piously and with the help of God because the fruitful seed of Yehuda was established through them the relevance of this passage the story concerns the eventual birth of King David and the Messiah what's most relevant to the reader is the messianic light concealed inside the passage a simple reading of the text sets the light a glow helping to hasten the emergence of the Messiah within us and in turn the arrival of the global Mashiach and final redemption 189 and she put off her widow's garments bear she 3814 come and behold could it be that Tamar a priest's daughter who was always modest would commit incest with her father-in-law he answered she was a righteous woman and did this with wisdom she was not lewd but wise and knew what would become of it she approached him to do kindness and truth by him 190 come and behold because she knew what would become of her efforts the holy one blessed be he aided her in the act and she conceived immediately all this was from the Holy One blessed be he it may be wondered why the Holy One blessed be he did not use another woman to bear these sons but this one Tamar he answers assuredly she was needed for this and no other woman would do 191 the seed of Yehuda was established with two women who bore King David King Solomon and Mashiach the two women Tamar and Rud resembled each other both Tamar and Rud lost their first husbands and replaced them through similar efforts 192 Tamar approached her father-in-law who was next of kin to his dead sons and thus worthy of taking her in Levi marriage the reason for her act is stated in the verse where she saw that Jello was grown and she was not given to him to wife bear she 3814 she therefore did this by her father-in-law 193 Rud's first husband died as did that of Tamar and then she did the deed by Boaz as it is written and uncovered his feet and laid herself. Down Rod 37 she then gave birth to Obed you might ask why Obed was not born to another woman instead of in this matter he answers assuredly it was necessary that she and not any other woman bore him from these two the seed of Yehuda was built and established both did well and brought kindness upon the dead so they would later be perfected in the world 194 this is the explanation of the verse so I praise the dead that are already dead Kahila 42 as long as the husbands of Tamar and Rod were alive there was no praise to their name after they died their wives were taken in Levi marriage and the kingdom of David Solomon and Mashiach descended from them both Tamar and Rod did kindness and truth by the dead and the Holy One blessed be he helped them in the very act thus all is fitting as it should be happy as he who studies the Torah day and night as it is written but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Yahashua 18 section 19 and Yosef was brought down to Egypt. The section begins by interpreting the phrasing of the title quotation as indicating God's approval of this act. It was necessary in order to fulfill his announcement to Abraham. A discussion follows concerning the legions of angels who sing praises to the glory of God throughout the night. It is the role of the children of Israel to offer praises to God through litanies three times daily. In this way God is glorified both day and night from above and below.
Increase the size of our vessel so that we can receive even greater light in our lives. These verses also help us expand our vessel so that it is not necessary for us to fall quite so far down or to stumble quite so often. 195 in the verse, and Yosef was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar bought him. Verse 391. Why is it written brought down rather than went down to Egypt? He answers the Holy One, blessed be he consented to the act of selling Yosef to Egypt so that the decree he made. Between the pieces would be fulfilled as it is written, No surely that your seed shall be a stranger. Beersheet 1513 and Potiphar bought him to commit sin with him, namely Sodomy 196. He quoted the verse who commands the sun and it rises not and seals up the stars. Eov 97 Come and behold the Holy One, blessed be he made seven stars in the firmament that correspond to the seven Sfarach, Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet, and Malchut. Each firmament contains numerous attendants who wait. Upon the Holy One, blessed be he 197. There is no attendant or appointee who does not have a specific task and service to perform for the Holy One, blessed be he, and each knows his own task. 198 Some act as their master's messengers appointed in this world to oversee men's deeds. There are those who sing chants and hymns before him and those in charge of poetry, and even they are in charge of poetry. There is no host, no star or constellation that does not praise the Holy One, blessed be he. 199 For when night falls three legions are divided into the three directions of the world each containing thousands and tens of thousands of angels whose task it is to sing 200 there are three hosts of angels and one living creature the Mukva that stands in charge of them they all praise the holy one blessed be he until morning comes when those of the south side and the luminous stars of angels praise and recite poetry before the holy one blessed be he it is written when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy Eo 387 the morning stars are the stars on the south side namely Jesus as it is written and Abraham went early in the morning Gershid 1927 all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy refers to the stars on the left side which are included within the right 201 when daylight breaks the children of Israel sing the praises of the holy one blessed be he three times a day corresponding to the three night watches they stand before each other until the glory of the Holy One, blessed be he is duly risen day and night. The Holy One, blessed be he ascends by means of the six litanies, three in the day and three at night. Two hundred and two, the living creature that stands above them, the Mukbah also stands on Yisrael below to properly fix everything as it is written. She rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens. Mishlei 3115 and gives food to her household refers to the upper three. Hosts and a portion to her maidens alludes to the camp of Yisrael below. Thus the glory of the Holy One, blessed be he is extolled on every side above and below. Everything exists by his permission and according to his wish. Two hundred and three, who commands the sun and it rises not. Eov 97 Rabbi Shimon says this refers to Yosef when he was sold into Egypt and seals up the stars are his brothers about whom it is written and the eleven stars bowed down to me. Beersheet 379 in another explanation who. Commands the sun refers to Yaakov at the time he was told no now whether it be your son's coat or not. Beersheet 3732 and it rises not means when the Shechina was gone from him and seals up the stars means his sons and his light was sealed and closed upon him because of them the sun darkened and the stars did not shine because Yosef was separated from his father. Come and behold since Yosef was sold Yaakov abstained from marital intercourse and remained in mourning until he heard the good tidings of Yosef. Section 20 and Hashem was with Yosef. Rabbi Yossi quotes the verse for the creator loves justice in order to lead a discussion on the protection that God offers the righteous through the examples of David and Yosef both of whom walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We are shown that God never abandons the righteous in his mercy he even guards the wicked who we learn receive blessings and are sustained by the spiritual elevation of the righteous ultimately though we see that fortunate indeed are the righteous in this world and in the world to come the relevance of this passage Kabbalistically mercy represents the concept of time time is defined as the distance between cause and effect the separation between action and reaction the space between deed and dividend the span between the person's behavior and the inevitable repercussion the divide between crime and consequence within this gap it is hoped that a person becomes enlightened to the senselessness of negative ways and recognizes the rewards of spiritual growth and positive unselfish behavior time however can cause us to mistakenly believe that goodness goes unrewarded while the wicked go unpunished yet time merely creates a delay a window of opportunity in which our free will can earn us fulfillment transformation and recognition of the cause and effect principle that is at work in our world without time a person would be instantly punished the moment he sinned the wicked would be obliterated the moment they transgressed they would lose the opportunity to change their ways and partake of the endless fulfillment in the world to come mercy time is awarded to the wicked on the merit of the righteous who love humanity unconditionally awareness and a deeper understanding of mercy and the cause and effect principle are aroused within us through the merit of the righteous whose spiritual power surges through this passage 204 and Hashem was with Yosef and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian Beersheet 392 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse for Hashem loves justice and forsakes not his pious ones they are preserved forever Tehillim 3728 it has been explained that this refers to Abraham because his pious ones is spelled pious one in the singular as has already been explained 205 come and behold wherever the righteous go the holy one blessed be he protects them and never Abandons them as David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. Tehillim 234, for wherever the righteous go, the Shechinah never leaves them. 206, when Yosef walked the valley of the shadow of death and was brought down to Egypt, the Shechinah was with him as it is written, and Hashem was with Yosef. Beersheet 392, because the Shechinah was with him, whatever he did in his hand prospered if he had something in his hand, but his master asked for something else, what was in his hand would turn into that which his master wanted, as it is written, and his master saw that Hashem was with him, and that Hashem made all that he did prosper in his hand. Beersheet 393, assuredly it did prosper in his hand, for Hashem was with him. 207, come and behold, it is not written, and his master knew that Hashem was with him, but rather, and his master saw this teaches us that he saw with his own eyes the miracles. That the Holy One blessed be he performed by his hand therefore Hashem blessed the Egyptian house for Yosef's sake. Beersheet 395 The Holy One blessed be he preserves the righteous for their sakes he also protects the wicked. This is said in the verse Hashem has blessed the house of Obed Edom because of the Ark of Elohim. 2 Shmuel 612 208 Other people are blessed for the sake of the righteous but they themselves cannot be saved by their own merits. This has been explained Yosef's master has been blessed for his sake yet Yosef could not be saved by his merits and gain his freedom. 209 He was later put in prison as it is written whose foot they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron. Tehillim 10518 Subsequently the Holy One blessed be he set him free and made him ruler over Egypt. Thus it is written for Hashem loves justice and forsakes not his pious ones they are preserved forever. Tehillim 3728 It is spelled as has already been explained and the Holy One blessed be he protects the righteous in this world and in the world to come as it is written but let all those that put their trust in you rejoice let them ever shout for joy because you do defend them and let those who love your name be joyful in you Tehillim 512 section 21 his master's wife cast her eyes this section pointedly reminds us that we must constantly be on guard to avoid being led astray by the evil inclination as the accusers assail man daily he must cleave to the dimension and sphere known as Bura to become mightier than the evil inclination as the rabbis point out Yosef exemplifies this endeavor he exposed himself to unfounded accusations because of the enormous care he took over his personal appearance the rabbis next address the importance of guarding and preserving the holy covenant the covenant we're told upholds heaven and earth when it is properly guarded God showers the world with blessings but if God's judgment finds the world full of Wicked people heaven and earth will dry up and their natural life sustaining functions will cease the relevance of this passage a reading of this section strengthens our resistance to evil and vain impulses and steals our resolve to pursue positive change for the sake of our soul and for all humankind the collective intolerant self-centered actions of man can become so great that they create a mass of negativity that literally
Mighty in strength, for by overcoming the mighty one they become as mighty as it. These are the angels of the Holy One, blessed be he, namely the righteous who come from the side of harsh Buru to overcome the evil inclination. They are called the mighty in strength who perform his bidding. Tehillim 10,320. Bless Hashem, you angels of his, such as Yosef, who was called righteous and mighty and preserved the holy covenant which was imprinted upon him. 213. Rabbi Lazar asks, What is the meaning of the verse? And it came to pass after these things. Bereshit 397. He says, It has been explained that the place from which the evil inclination brings forth accusations is the great called. After these things, Yosef gave it an opening for accusations, while the evil inclination said that Yosef's father was mourning over him and that he, Yosef, adorned himself and curled his hair. Thus it aroused against him the bear, namely Potiphar's wife, and it assailed him. 214. And it came to pass after. These things come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he inspects the world to judge it and finds wicked people there and then he shut up the heavens that there be no rain and that the land yield not its fruit and according to justice you perish quickly to 1117 because of the sins of men the heavens and earth stop performing their natural functions 215 come and behold those who do not keep the Holy Covenant cause separation between the children of Israel and their father in heaven for it is written and you turn aside and serve other Elohim and worship them and then Hashem's anger be inflamed against you and he shut up the heavens that there be no rain to 1116 to 17 he who guards not the covenant is equal to a person who serves other Elohim for he is false to the Holy Covenant 216 when the Holy Covenant is well kept in the world the Holy One blessed be he pours blessings from above which are showered over the world as it is written you Elohim did send a Plentiful rain whereby you did strengthen your inheritance when it languished. Tehillim 6810 The plentiful rain is a rain of favor that pours when the Holy One blessed be he is favorable toward the congregation of Israel and desires to pour blessings upon it. Then you did strengthen your inheritance when it languished. 217 Your inheritance is Israel the inheritance of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written. Yaakov is a lot of his inheritance. Devarim 329 The languishing is the congregation of Israel which languishes in a strange land it is thirsty for water but cannot slake its thirst and is thus weary with favorable rain. Then you did strengthen 218 Thus the heavens the earth and all their armies are all established on the principles of the covenant as it is written. If my covenant be not day and night it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. Here may 3325 We should guard it as has already been explained it is therefore first. Written and Yosef was a beautiful form and fair to look upon and then his master's wife cast her eyes upon Yosef which means that because he was not on his guard but adorned himself by curling his hair and was good looking and well favored his master's wife cast her eyes upon him. Section 22 She spoke to Yosef day by day. This section discusses the struggle of the individual to resist the seduction of the evil inclination. God has provided certain devices that preserve us from accusations of the evil side. The most important of these is of course the Torah. Those who study the Torah for its own sake we are told shall inherit both the upper and lower worlds and will rejoice when God finally banishes the evil inclination from this world. Those who succumb to the defiled side however shall be punished in Gehenna or hell there they shall weep with anguish that they did not overcome the evil inclination. The relevance of this passage physical creation came. About when the collective souls of men rejected the endless light of fulfillment that was originally bestowed upon them by the Creator, we did this in order to gain the opportunity to earn and create this fulfillment through our own effort. Moreover, just as an athlete requires competition to give meaning to the concept of victory, the evil inclination was created to challenge us during this process. The Torah represents the path to victory over our evil inclination, not from a strictly religious standpoint, but from a spiritual perspective. The Torah, through the lens of Kabbalah, is a tool that imbues us with strength and courage to conquer our negative impulses. Even those that may have been barely noticeable, a reading of these passages provides us with spiritual strength to reject the temptation of the ego based desires that are our true adversaries in life. 219 And it came to pass as she spoke to Yosef day by day, Bereshit 3910, Rabbi Lazar began the discussion with the verse 2. Keep you from the evil woman. Mishlei 624. Happy are the righteous who know the paths of the Holy One. Blessed be he and tread them for they are occupied in the study of the Torah day and night. And whoever is occupied with the Torah day and night inherits two worlds, the upper and the lower. He inherits this world even though he does not study it for its own sake and inherits the upper world. If he does study it for its own sake, 220 come and behold it is written length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Mishlei 316 length of days is in her right hand means that whoever studies the Torah for its own sake has length of days in the world to come where he attains the glory of the Torah. This is the glory and crown which adorn everything for the crown of the Torah abides only in the world to come and in her left hand are riches and honor in this world for he who does not study the Torah for its own sake merits riches and honor in this world. 221 When Rabbi Shia came from Babylon to the land of Israel he read the Torah until his face shone like the sun those who studied the Torah stood before him and he would say this one studied it for its own sake and this one did not he would pray for the one who studied it for its own sake pray that he would do so always and merit the world to come and he prayed for he who did not study it for its own sake that he would come to do so and thereby merit everlasting life 222 One day he saw a student who studied the Torah the student's face was pale he said to himself that he assuredly contemplates sin he made him come before him and spoke to him the words of the Torah until he composed himself from that day on the student resolved not to seek evil thoughts but to study the Torah for its own sake 223 Rabbi Yussi said that when a man notices that he is assailed by evil thoughts he should study the Torah and they will pass Rabbi Lazar said that when the evil side comes to crush Man he should draw it toward the Torah and it will part from him. 224 Come and behold we have learned that when the evil side stands before the Holy One blessed be he and indicts the world for its evil sins the Holy One blessed be he pities it and advises men on how to be saved from it so it will not control them or their deeds. The advice is to escape the evil side by studying the Torah diligently. He asks how do we know this? He answers from the verse for your commandment is a lamp and Torah is light and reproofs of instruction are your way of life which is followed by the verse to keep you from the evil woman from the smoothness of the tongue of an alien. Mishlei 623 to 24 the Torah then preserves one from the evil inclination. 225 the side of defilement the other side is always before the Holy One blessed be he blaming men for their transgressions it also stands below to accuse men for their sins he explained that it stands above to remind men of their sins and to accuse them for their deeds because they were given over to its power as was he of when the Holy One blessed be he said to the Satan he is in your hand IYOB 26 226 it also accuses them and when the Holy One blessed be he judges them on Rosh Hashanah New Year's Day and Yom Kippur it remembers every sin and deed it stands over them and brings accusations but the Holy One blessed be he pities Israel and advises them on how to escape the evil side how by blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah Day and giving of the scapegoat on Yom Kippur so the evil one will leave them and busy himself with the portion given him 227 come and behold it is written her feet go down to death her steps take hold of Sheol hell Mishlei 55 of the secret of the faith it is said her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace Mishlei 317 these are the ways and paths of the Torah and all are one that is the roads those of defilement and those of holiness are all one this one is of peace and the other is of death and they are complete opposites to each other for each and every path leading to defilement has an opposing path leading to holiness 228 happy is the portion of Israel who cleave faithfully to the Holy One blessed be he for he advises them on how to be saved from all the other sides in the world because they are a holy nation his lot and portion he helps them in everything happy are they in this world and in the world to come 229 come and behold the evil side comes down to hover about the world and when it sees the deeds of men who deviated from their ways in the world it goes up to accuse them and were it not for the Holy One blessed be he who feels pity for his creatures they would not remain in the world 230 it is written and it came to pass as she spoke to Yosef day by day Bereshit 3910 as she spoke refers to the evil side who daily ascends to bring accusations before the Holy One blessed be he since Yosef alludes to
truth and pushes them from the path of life to Gehenom 234 happy is he whose deeds are good who keeps his way so that the evil inclination shall not be attached to him as it is written and it came to pass as she spoke to Yosef day by day that he hearkened not to her bear she 3910 he did not hearken to what she said to him daily as the spirit of defilement which is the evil inclination seduces man every day to lie by her in Gehenom and thus be sentenced there to be with her 235. Come and behold when a man cleaves to that side he is drawn after her he defiles himself with her in this world and in the next come and behold the side of impurity is dirty and filthy as it is written you shall say to it get you hence hath Zayashaya 3022 actual excrement is implied hath so and with excrement we proclaim that whoever turns from the ways of the Torah is condemned to excrement to which were sentenced all the wicked people in the world who had no faith in the Holy One. Bless be he 236 it is written and it came to pass about this day that he went into the house to do his work and there was none of the men of the house there within Bershi 3911 this day is when the evil inclination rules over the world and goes down to lead men astray he asks when will that be he answers when men repent their sins or study the Torah and observe its precepts the evil inclination comes down to lead them astray and thus prevent their repentance and occupation with it. Torah and its precepts 237 he went into the house to do his work Bershi 3911 to study the Torah and observe its precepts which are man's work in this world because a man's work in this world is the service of the Holy One blessed be he namely the study of the Torah and its precepts a man should be as strong as a lion on all sides so that the other side will not have power over him and seduce him it is written and there was none of the men namely nobody to rise before the evil inclination and wage war against it 238 when it sees no one standing against it it is the way of the evil inclination to wage war with him immediately she caught him by his garment saying lie with she she caught him by his garment because when the evil inclination obtains mastery over man he first adorns and mends his clothes and curls his hair as it is written she caught him by his garment saying lie with me and cleave to me 239 the righteous stands against him and engages in war against him bear she 3912 it is written and he left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside he should leave it be strong against it flee from it and escape it so that it will have no power over him 240 rabbi it's said that in the future the righteous will see the evil inclination as a high mountain and wonder how we could have conquered such a high and huge mountain the wicked will see the evil inclination as a thread that is as thin as a hair they will marvel and Ask how could we not have overcome such a tiny thread of hair these weep and the others weep the Holy One blessed be he will sweep the wicked from the world and slay him before their eyes so he will not have dominion over the world anymore the righteous will see it and rejoice as it is written surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name the upright shall dwell in your presence Tehillim 14014 section 23 the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker in this section we learn that God regulates the order of nature so he may execute his divine purpose which is to bestow infinite pleasure to his creation upon humanity's completion of spiritual transformation Rabbi Yehuda opens a discussion on the superior position of man in the hierarchy of the animal kingdom man we're told retains dominion over all species as long as his divine image is not tainted by sin this point is exemplified by the story of Daniel in the lion's den we should therefore guard against sin and examine our actions every day so that we may repent for any sins we have committed the text then turns to an examination of God's role in enabling Yosef to achieve greatness because he was righteous we learned that Yosef was able to provide interpretations of dreams only because he entrusted the task of interpreting them to God the relevance of this passage we have the divine capacity to consider others before ourselves and even to sacrifice our own lives for the good of others this is a uniquely human trait and a mark of humanity's spiritual superiority throughout creation however if we are intolerant and insensitive to one another we utterly lose our spiritual value this passage removes intolerance and judgment of others it awakens compassion respect and sensitivity toward our fellow human beings especially during moments of hostility and conflict this passage further assists us in more clearly identifying and more sincerely trusting the many hidden roles played by the creator in our lives the purpose of these many roles is to bring light into the world through human actions and interactions 241 and it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt Bershi 401 Rabbi Yehuda opened with the verse will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing Amos 34 come and behold how careful should a man be in worshipping the Holy One blessed be he for whoever is assiduous in studying the Torah and serving the Holy One blessed be he is feared by all 242 for when the Holy One blessed be he created the universe he made all the creatures in the world in their appropriate shape he then created man in the supernal image and made him ruler by power of this image over all creatures as long as man continues in the world all creatures look up to him and when they see the supernal image of man they feel dread and tremble before him as it is written and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird bear sheet 92 this is true only when they look and see in him the supernal image and the soul is in him 243 rabbi laser said that the image of the righteous does not change even when the soul is not in them when a man does not walk in the ways of the Torah his sacred image is altered and the beast of the field and the birds in the sky then prevail against him when the sacred image was changed so was the image of man who then received the image of the other animals so that creatures are no longer fearful of him and can have power over him 244 come and behold the holy one blessed be he alters the deeds above and below that is he switches the sacred image above and the image of man below to bring matters back to their roots as they were before the sin of the tree of knowledge so that his wish shall abide in all the world's deeds by retribution all the deeds in the world improve Daniel's image was not changed when he was cast into the lion's den and because of that he was saved Rabbi Chizkiah asked if this is true why is it written by Elohim has sent his angel and he has shut the lion's mouths that they have no hurt me Daniel 623 it sounds as if he was not hurt because of the angels who shut the lion's mouths and not because of his sacred image 245 he said to him Daniel was not hurt because the sacred image of a righteous man is the very angel who shut the lion's mouths and shackled them to keep Daniel safe therefore Daniel said my Elohim has sent an angel Daniel 623 this refers to that angel upon whom all the images of the world are engraved he strengthened the image in me so that the lions could not overpower me and he shut their mouths assuredly he sent his angel 246 this is the one angel upon whom all the images are engraved he is the secret of the Mukba called angel from whom all the shapes in the world are issued it is written he judges among it Nations their land is full of dead bodies Tehillim 1106 for all the shapes of the bodies are before him because no shape can change itself before him thus it behooves a man to guard his ways and paths so as not to sin before his master and thereby retain the image of Adam 247 come and behold Yashiskel guarded his mouth against forbidden food as it is written nor did loathsome meat ever come into my mouth Yashiskel 414 he therefore merited being named the son of Adam it is written of Daniel but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's food nor with the wine which he drank Daniel 18 he then merited preserving the image of Adam for all the beings in the world were fearful of the image of Adam who ruled over them all and was king over all 248 Rabbi Yossi said that a man should beware of sinning and not deviate right or left although he guards himself he should search himself daily for sins for when a man rises from his that two witnesses stand before him and accompany him the whole day 249 when a man wishes to rise he opens his eyes and the witnesses say to him let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you Mishlei 425 when he prepares himself to go they say to him make even the path of your foot of it 26 thus when a man walks he should guard against his sins the whole day 250 when night falls he should examine and search his actions for that day to repent for his deeds he should always search them so he can repent before his master as it is written and my sin is ever before me Tehillim 515 251 come and behold as long as the children of Israel were in the holy land they had no sin on their hands because as has been explained of the sacrifices they offered daily that atoned for their sins once Israel is exiled from the holy land and there was nothing to atone for them the Torah and their good deeds atoned for them because the Shechinah is with them in Exile whoever does not care for the ways of the Holy One blessed be he causes the Shechinah to bend to the dust as it is written
dream namely by the dream of Pharaoh 254 and they dreamed a dream both of them each man on the same night each man according to the interpretation of his dream Beersheet 405 come and behold we have learned that all dreams follow their interpretation in this respect he asks when Yosef interpreted their dreams why did he give one a good interpretation and another a bad one why did not he give them both a good interpretation he answers the two dreams concerned Yosef and because he knew the root of every matter he interpreted their dreams accordingly and gave them meaning so as to return each matter to its own place and root 255 it is written and Yosef said to them do not interpretations belong to Elohim tell me them I pray you Beersheet 408 he asks why did he speak thus he answers this is the way a dream should be interpreted by entrusting the interpretation to the Holy One blessed be he for the existence of everything is there and therein lies the interpretation. 256 Come and behold we have learned that the dream's grade is the sixth below prophecy for between the grade of prophecy and the grade of dreams lie six grades and interpretation ascends from the dream's grade into another one he explains that the dream is a low grade of Gabriel and interpretation is established by it for it depends upon speech the Mukbah as it is written do not interpretations belong to Elohim Beersheet 408 Assuredly to Elohim which is the Mukbah called Elohim. Section 24 Let a double portion of your spirit be upon me we learn that whoever contemplates the image of his master in the spirit of wisdom shall gain an additional measure of spirit thus Elisha Eliyahu Zair by right was granted the power to perform a double achievement with the same spirit if he could penetrate to the deepest core of the spirit that Eliyahu had bequeathed at the moment Eliyahu was taken from him Yosef also received illumination in this way this allowed him to Interpret the symbolism of the dreams of the chief wine steward and the chief baker and to grasp the significance these dreams held for the children of Israel. The chief wine steward's dream it is explained belonged to the grade of the moon in lightness and was thus under the rule of Zerenth and while the chief baker's dream belonged to the grade of the moon in darkness and thus came under the rule of the evil one. The relevance of this passage here we receive a powerful connection to the souls of the righteous which gives us the ability to ascend to spiritual heights unattainable by ordinary men. Moreover we begin to recognize our spirit's ceaseless yearning for reunion with the creator coupled with the wisdom to find our way back to him. 257 It is written and the chief butler told his dream to Yosef. Bear she 409 Rabbi Lazar opened with the verse and it came to pass when they had gone over that Eliyahu said to Elisha ask what I shall do for you before I am taken away. From you and Elisha said, I pray you let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. To Melashim 29, we must study this verse for the words are surprising. Eliyahu said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you. It was not for him, but for the Holy One. Blessed be he to grant wishes. Moreover, Elisha also knew he could not grant his request. Only the Holy One. Blessed be he could. Why did he ask? I pray you let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. 258. He answers that he who held heaven and earth and the whole world in his grip could perform this wish. It is a certainty that the Holy One. Blessed be he always fulfills the wishes of Eliyahu and the other righteous. As it is written, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. Talim 14519. This is all the more true of he upon whom the Holy Spirit dwells, who bequeathed it to Elisha the righteous. For Elisha was his servant and was worthy of being his heir, as was expressly said by the Holy One. Blessed be he and Elisha the son of. Shafet of Abel Mechola shall you anoint to be prophet in your place. I may 1916. Elisha was then his heir apparent. 259. Double portion of your spirit be upon me. To Melashim 29. He asks, What does this mean? Could it possibly mean that he asks two for one? That is, that his spirit will be double Elihu's spirit. How could he have asked of him for something that he did not possess? As no one can give what he does not have, he replies that he did not ask for two spirits for the one he had, but that the same spirit he had performed twice as many miracles as Elihu performed. 260. It is written, and he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. To Melashim 210. Why did he make his request conditional? He answers that he said to him, If you could understand the essence of the spirit that I leave you when I am taken from you, it shall be yours for the essence of the spirit that he discerns. While looking at Eliyahu who is something he should well cleave to 261 come and behold he who looks into what he learned from his rabbi and sees in him the wisdom he learned from him could receive an additional portion of spirit come and behold in whatever he did Yosef would see the spirit of wisdom in his father's image he therefore succeeded in what he did and another spirit of a superior illumination was added to him 262 when that wicked man said to him behold the vine was before me. Bear she 409 Yosef trembled because he did not know what it meant but when he added and on the vine were three tendrils Bear she 4010 his spirit rose and received additional illumination he looked at his father's image and his spirit shone because he understood its meaning 263 it is written and on the vine were three tendrils Bear she 4010 Yosef said this is assuredly an altogether good tiding for the vine indicated the congregation of Israel the Mukba Yosef was informed that her Time came to rule and on the vine were three tendrils that allude to the three supernal grades that came out of the vine the priests love its and Yisrael Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin which shine within the Mukbah when she is whole 264 and it was as though it budded and its blossoms shot forth Bear she 4010 for their sake the congregation of Yisrael mounts to Zeir Anpin and is blessed by the supernal king Zeir Anpin and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes refers to the righteous men in the world who are likened to ripened grapes another explanation of the verse and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes is that it refers to the wine preserved in its grapes since the six days of creation 265 thus far was Yosef was informed by the stream of the chief butler the rest of the dream of the chief butler is his some dreams are for the dreamer as well as for others that is part of them reveals future events for the dreamer and another part future events for Others and I took the grapes refers to himself not to Yosef 266 we have learned that whoever sees white grapes in his dream sees a good sign for himself black grapes are not a good sign what is the reason for this there are two grapes black and white one is good and the other is not for white indicates mercy and black indicates judgment all grapes both white and black depend on the secret of the faith the according to wisdom their meanings are explained as either good or evil the black ones indicate the need for mercy and the white indicates the providential care of mercy 267 come and behold Adam's wife pressed him grapes and brought death upon him Israel and the whole world when Noach came upon these grapes he was not well guarded as it is written he drank of the wine and was drunk and he was uncovered within his tent Bereshit 921 the sons of Agaron drank wine pressed from these grapes and offered a sacrifice while still under its influence consequently they Titus has been already explained it is therefore written their grapes are grapes of gall their clusters are bitter devarim 3232 it is written thus because of what the grapes cause 268 the chief butler saw in his dream good grapes namely white grapes in the vineyard where they sent forth pleasantness and fragrance in perfectly whole grapes Yosef therefore knew it looked into the root of the matter and solved it thoroughly because he received good tidings by that dream he interpreted it favorably and so it came to pass 269 come and behold it is written when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good he said to Yosef I also have af in my dream behold I had three baskets of white bread on my head bear she 4016 damned are the wicked whose every deed is for evil whose every speech is uttered for evil and to cause evil 270 he opened his speech with the word af also anger in the sentence I also in my dream immediately Yosef was seized with fright for he knew that all his words were of evil intent and that he bore evil tidings by the verse behold I had three baskets of white bread on my head Yosef knew that he was informed of the destruction of the temple and the exile of Israel from the holy land 271 come and behold and in the uppermost basket there was all manner of Pharaoh's baked food and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head Bear she 4017 this refers to the other nations who will gather upon Israel to kill them destroy their homes and scatter them to the four winds of the world Yosef saw all this and knew that the stream alluded to Israel who would be guilty before the king he then interpreted his dream in an evil sense which was fulfilled 272 come and behold there were two grades that they had seen the chief butler saw the supernal grade Zeir and been ascending to rule and the moon the
This passage far worse than lying to others is the act of lying to ourselves. It is in our nature to believe our own false tales and then attempt to provoke these distortions in the world. Self-deception is the greatest of all deceptions because our intentions might very well be good when sunlight shines through the window pane. The dust floating in the air is suddenly revealed. Spiritual light has the same effect on our negative qualities which so often remain hidden purposefully perusing these. Passages removes prevarication so that the true purpose of our existence identifying and eliminating negative aspects of our character shines brightly in our lives. It is of equivalent effect to David's supplication summoning the light to guard us from the ever-present dangers of self-deception and allowing us to grow in righteousness and wisdom. 273 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse Create in me a clean heart Elohim and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Tehillim 5112. This verse has already been expounded upon yet the clean heart has the same meaning as in the verses Give therefore your servant an understanding heart I may lash him 39 and but he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast Mishlei 1515 for that reason his heart is assuredly clean 274 and renew a steadfast spirit within me Tehillim 5112 This is surely the steadfast spirit mentioned in the verse and a spirit from Elohim moved over the surface of the waters Bereshit 12 it has been said that this is the spirit of Mashiach about which it is written a new spirit will I put within you Yashis 3626 David therefore asked and renew a steadfast spirit Dash the spirit of Mashiach within me Tehillim 5112 275 For on the other side there is a defiled heart and a spirit of confusion that provokes humans to transgress This is a defiled spirit called the spirit of confusion as it is written Hashem has mingled a spirit of confusion in the midst of Ereshia 1914 Therefore David requested renew a steadfast spirit within me Tehillim 5112 He asks what does renew imply he answers it refers to the renewal of the moon that I ask the renewal of the union between the Mukbah and Zeir and because at the time that the moon is renewed it is proven that David king of Israel symbolic of the Mukbah is considered alive and well having attained Mokin of the light of Shaya therefore he asked to be renewed implying the renewal of the union with Zeir and 276 As they were walking together Rabbi Yossi asked Rabbi Lazar about the verse and there came forth the spirit and stood before Hashem and said I will persuade him and Hashem said to him with what and he said I will go out and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said you shall persuade him and prevail also go out and do so I may lash him 2221 to 22 we have learned that this was the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar Israel he asked could it be that the souls after ascending and Staying above return to this world it is astonishing that he said I will go out and I will be a lying spirit 277 also why was a cap punished for what he did it was a law decreed by Shmuel to Israel as it is written and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your best olive yards I Shmuel 814 if a cap took the vineyard from Nebo he was within his rights moreover a cap offered him a vineyard or gold in exchange but he refused why therefore was he punished 278 Rabbi Lazar replied this is well asked come and behold we have to look at the assumption that this was Nebo's spirit could his spirit have risen and stood in the presence of the Holy One blessed be he and asked to lie as it is written and there came a spirit I will go out and I will be a lying spirit I may lash him 2222 if he were righteous how could he have asked to lie in that world which is the world of truth the righteous man will not ask to lie in this world let alone in that world and if he were not Righteous how could he have stood in the presence of the Holy One blessed be he 279 but surely Nebo was not righteous enough to stand before the Holy One blessed be he it is another spirit that rules over the world the spirit that always ascends to stand before the Holy One blessed be he namely the Satan he is the one who leads men astray by lying for he lies by the Holy Name he is wont to lie and constantly resorts to lies therefore he said I will go out and I will be a lying spirit. The Holy One blessed be he replied go out and do so get you hence for it has been explained that he that tells lies shall not remain in my sight. Tehillim 1017 he is therefore assuredly a lying spirit 280 further we have to explain why he was punished it was because he killed Nebo if he already took his vineyard why kill him it was because he killed him without cause that he was punished he first killed unjustly and then took his vineyard thus it is written have you killed and also. Taken possession I may lash him 2119 and he was punished come and behold there are innumerable people in the world whom the lying spirit has led astray he has dominion over the world using several devices and actions as we have already explained 281 King David therefore wished to be guarded from the lying spirit and to be removed from impurity as it is written create me a clean heart Elohim and renew a steadfast spirit within me this is a steadfast spirit the other is a lying spirit. Thus there are two grades the one holy the steadfast spirit and the other impure the lying spirit 282 he opened with the verse and Hashem utters his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is mighty who executes his word Yoel 211 this verse has already been explained yet wherever and Hashem Vavya Hevav is mentioned it alludes to Zeir and his court of justice the Mukbah he utters his voice this is the voice referred to in the verses the voice of words. Devarim 412 and I am not a man of words Shemot 410 because the man of words is the man of Elohim Devarim 331 before his army refers to Israel 283 for his camp is very great is similar to the verse is there any number to his army Zeo 25 3 for there are countless chieftains and messengers to the Holy One blessed be he already to bring accusations against the children of Israel the Holy One blessed be he therefore came before Israel as was stated above and Hashem utters his voice before his army Yoel 211 to guard them against the accusations 284 for he is mighty who executes his word he asks who is mighty he replies it is the righteous who is occupied with the Torah day and night another explanation is that mighty refers to the accuser who is always before the Holy One blessed be he strong as iron strong as a stone he executes his word after receiving permission above from the Holy One blessed be he, he takes away the soul below 285 for the Day of Hashem is great and very terrible and who can abide it? Yoel 211 He is ruler over all high and mighty and everything is subject to his dominion. Happy are the righteous to whom the Holy One blessed be he desires always to give merit in the world to come and to enable them to participate in the joy of the righteous in the future to come it is written but let all those that put their trust in you rejoice let them ever shout for joy because you do defend them and let those who love your name be joyful in you. Tehillim 512 blessed be Hashem forever. Amen and Amen.